Well, good morning. It's another Saturday here. Before I get into this, if you would be so kind as to let me know that the audio is coming through cleanly. Can you guys hear me? Is the volume good? I'm checking Twitter for your response, by the way. Thank you, Kalo. Thank you, Margin Gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so here we are on the cusp of a new journey. Uh, this coming week, you'll be sitting in the presence of, hopefully, much more educational medium using my content and my experience. And I want to kind of like give you a little bit more details as to what to expect. So that way we know what we're doing. Also kind of describe the difference between traditional technical analysis versus what you're going to see. Hopefully you've seen in the past month, I've been with you every day, calling specific things and price action and at the risk of sounding braggadocious, I'm not trying to be. I just want you to think about how many times I've mentioned something in price action real time before the fact and how price delivered after that. And some of you have followed those reference points real time and taken trades. I'm going to say this again, and you'll hear me say it every single time we do a live session. Please don't do that. You don't know where I'm going to be going with the lesson. You have no idea if it's going to be something that's going to be meant for you to struggle with and or if it's a low resistance liquidity run. You don't know that. And that's the, the first month. Okay, I'm going to put you in front of the charts with me, and I'm going to have you observe specific things. The reason why I'm doing it that way is because my son literally will be sitting right next to me. Sometimes I'll make him grunt. That way you know <laughs> somebody else next to me, not just simply me talking to myself. Because I want him to understand much like a neophyte would. You know, how do you go in? How do you back test? How do you study? How do you look at price action on the days that ICT is not doing his live sessions? How do I get the maximum growth out of not pushing a demo account? Not pushing an entry button? Okay, not going with a live account because that's the best way to learn when it's not the best way to learn. It's the worst thing you can do. In my opinion, and my experience as an educator as well, uh, it's been my observation that those individuals that start trading with money, whether it be the most insignificant amount of money versus not learning how to worry about the outcome in terms of monetary reward or pain, loss, the ones that do it without money tend to be quicker to profitability, more long-term consistently profitable, and they're not plagued with the problems that even myself as a trader, I still have impulses. When I see certain moves, you know, I know that the 20-year-old ICT wants to go in there and go 30% of equity on that one trade, just to, just to say – I killed you. I, I slayed you. You had no answer for me coming in and taking it and plundering you. That's, that's a thing that comes up many times throughout the week when I see a setup that is absolutely easy. And I'll show you what easy looks like. And that's the whole point of why I'm doing it this year, because I want you to focus on those conditions. Because technical analysis uh, leads us as new traders, new developing speculators in the marketplace, we, we are invited many times to do things because there's lots of ways, different roadmaps and routes to get to a winning outcome. And it's not limited to my stuff, okay? Um, anything that's a catalyst that makes a decision, whether it be a random number generator, flipping a coin, last time your elbow hurt, you know, the price of cattle went up, you know, <laughs> there's traders that do that kind of stuff. And as long as they manage the money, you, know, you could potentially, in theory, be profitable. But the outcome isn't really linked to what you believe the catalyst was for you to get into the trade. I want you to think about that throughout the year. So every time we're doing our live sessions, 
I want you to, at the end of it, right when we're done, don't postpone it. Don't, I'll do it when I get more time. At that moment, I want you to record in your journal what your observations were, what things that you felt while price action was being delivered and where I'm commenting and where I'm placing your attention. And I want you to focus on doing that without having any real negative reflections. So while I don't sugarcoat the realities of trading and, and what you're going to have to go through, in your journal, you absolutely are sugarcoating it. Because you want this book that you're writing in your own words, in your own observations, your personal experience. This year, each of you that take on this endeavor every single week with me, if you journal it, you're going to have the best trading book there's ever been. Because it's going to be uniquely linked to the way you think. It's going to be uniquely associated with your personal experience that no one can download and transfer to you. You saw it. You were there. You watched it happen. The good, the bad. When it was on point, it was precise and, you know, precision like you could have never imagined. And times when you thought it was going to be precise, and maybe I thought it was going to be precise, it doesn't deliver as we expected. You're going to have all those experiences. And that's something that you're going to encapsulate, that a book written by someone else and the things that they picked as salient for the book, you're going to have the real deal. Like that's, this is the trading book that all of you would want to buy, but you're never going to find it on a bookshelf. Now, I'm going to write four books, but those books still will pale in comparison to the book that you're going to create and write in your own journal this year. And I mean that wholeheartedly. You have no idea the benefit of doing it this way until after it's done. And when the year closes and we break for the December month, it's the second Friday of November is when we're going to stop the live sessions that way. Some people are asking, how long am I going to go? Uh, I'm sticking to my schedule. Second Friday of November you, that will be it. So we won't be doing any more live sessions after that, but it'll be two, two per week. <clears throat> so I want you to know that it's exciting what we're about to do. It's exciting not only for many of you, but I'm excited because I know what you're about to experience. And I, I feel like a kid on Christmas Eve. Like I literally feel like a kid at Christmas Eve, still believing in Santa Claus, <laughs> And the excitement of, I'm going to get presents. What am I going to get? Nothing bad is going to come, right? So that's how I feel. I feel that, that excitement for all of you. Because many of you are plundering around through you know, confusion. You don't know what you're doing, what you're looking for. And there's a lot of videos on my channel. Um, the easiest way for you to know where to go and where to study is when I'm literally doing the live sessions. Because when I'm referring to something, I'll refer to where I talked about these types of things. So that way you can go back and look into, oh, well, let me, in between the next live session, let me go and delve into what he said there. And that way I can get a better understanding. It'll help you fill in the gaps that I won't be able to do on a minute by minute candlestick analysis, you know, reading it real time with you. Uh, my focus is gonna be limited to what it is that's occurring in the chart at that time. I'm not going to be covering, you know, Forex and everything else. I will be doing daily reviews in the evening time. So I'll, I'll give you my analysis on Forex and I'll give you my analysis on the, the macro economic front, you know, what the markets should be doing collectively. And I'll try to keep them relatively short. But if you're going to have to require me to cover all those markets, you're going to expect at least a 20 minute video at the minimum. OK, because we're doing analysis. Analysis can't be. You know, dollar menu approach. You can't just do drive-through menu um, analysis and expect to get really good results. So the discussion this morning is the market analysis versus technical science. Uh, the topic came to me last night before I laid down, and I wanted you to think about what it is that you know and what it is that you believe about 
the markets right now? What analysis concepts, what traditional approaches have you adopted, used, discarded? I can look back and tell you that I've gone through a lot of different approaches and placed a great deal of emphasis on things that have really no bearing on you know, who I am as a trader today. Just about every, every mentor I had um, has their fingerprints on me as the trader but very few elements really bleed into the actual things that I do trading. So I'm thankful for the mentors that I've had, but none of them taught me how to trade like I trade. They gave me the little bump, the little nudge of, you know, focus over here, look at this over here. And it got my attention, like Linda Rask, you know, the whole idea of stop hunts, which, you know, I just thought, this is what happens when you're wrong. When you put your stop loss in the wrong place, it gets hit. And then because of the approaches that she taught with her book with Larry Connors, you know, that whole premise was how I built the confidence of going in, selling short a run above old highs or buying below old lows. And that was my version of Turtle Soup. Uh, it's not the same as her book titled uh, concept, Turtle Soup, or not even Turtle Soup Plus One. It is a good book. I think you should have it. Every trader should have it. Um, there's a lot of things in that book that I don't subscribe to, but it helped me. It helped me understand a concept about trading that was alien to me. And I know some of you have those things about my content. Most of you at some point or another, uh, look at all of that material on my YouTube channel and you think, wow, where do I begin? You know, what do I do with all this? You know, I just want to learn how to make money. You know, can he just tell me in five minutes how to do that? I, I can't do that in five minutes, but I want you to focus on how I'm doing it literally over my shoulder when we do our live streams. Think about what I'm not and not while I'm doing it afterwards. These are all the things that you're going to record in your journal. You're going to note how little that you need to focus on to find a setup that will yield potential points or pips if you're a Forex trader. Everything that I'm gonna be teaching over the medium of the E-mini S&P is absolutely applicable to stocks. It's applicable to Forex. It's applicable to cash markets. If you're not in the futures market, I've been wrestling with the idea of how, I know a lot of you don't have access to the futures markets and you like to trade the, like the, the US 30, instead of the Dow futures or the US 100 cash market instead of the NASDAQ futures and the US 500 versus the S&P E-mini. I've thought about how I was gonna do that. So I think what will have to happen is I'll have to create a layout. So that way when, I, when I'm observing things in ES and when I interchangeably go back to the NQ chart so that way you can see in compare and contrast, you'll see also on my chart how I'm pl you know, plotting and posting the, the S&T. I've seen a couple of people ask, how do you put that on there? I'll, I'll show you, I'll walk you through it that we can see what it is I'm, I'm doing, how I dress my charts up so that we can do everything that you see me doing with my charts. You're seeing uh, one template of the eight monitors that I have. Now, don't think, because I said eight monitors, there's eight in front of me, okay? I have. Supporting monitors to the side of me, but they're not important. The ones that I'm actually working with, they're making the decisions on what it is I'm following, what I'm focusing on, they're right in front of me. And you only need the template I'm going to show you. If you can't have the, the template where it has the you know, three charts on one screen, you can toggle through just by changing the time frame. It, don't think that you have to have it exactly like I'm saying. But a lot of you ask for this, so I'm showing you. It is not the secret to it. It's whatever you're comfortable with. If I have eight screens on my desk in front of me, don't equate that my experience or my success in being able to do this is attributed to because I have eight monitors. Because I can literally be walking around. I tell you not to trade on your phone, but because I know what I'm looking for, I could trade on my phone. 
but that's not an invitation for you to say, well, ICT said he can do it, so therefore I am his student. I should be expected to do the same thing. That's not true. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying to combat the idea that you have to have all of this real estate in front of you in terms of monitors. You don't. So don't let that be an impediment to you or a, a, a point of contention for, oh, well, you know, I have to have extra things I can't afford. And that's the perfect excuse why I'm going to fail. No. One laptop. When I'm doing all of my video work and I'm recording, I'm using a laptop. When I'm talking to you, well, I'm not talking to you now with a laptop, but if I'm doing uh, live streams, I'm going to be on a laptop, one single laptop. But I have a layout that I'm constantly going to be referring to. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that. Most of all the things that you're worrying about or have worried about when trying to learn from me or watching videos and such, you're going to see how all of that was just needless anxiety. You're trying to make everything applicable to every condition in the marketplace on any given time frame when it's not necessary. Much like it was when I first learned technical analysis, the traditional approach to uh, technical analysis, I wanted to apply everything. Every trade had to refer to commitment of traders. Every trade had to have at least three moving averages. It had to have two oscillators. This one oscillator might be lying, so I have to confirm it with another oscillator. And if they agreed and there was a divergence there, then and only then the trade was really good because I had two witnesses behind the idea, right? So... More isn't better. It's not. And my charts only get bloated when I'm annotating levels for you to observe. And it's going to be very hard for me to do what it is I usually do with price action. And like I'm, I'm going to have to force myself to annotate much more on a chart than I normally would. So that way you can see it. So if you're wondering what I mean by that, just basically think about what I'm doing with the chart when I'm recording it and I'm doing the execution. I, like I have to force myself to do that. I don't, I don't do that when I'm trading. It's usually just a naked chart. I'm looking for price at a specific time to do certain things. And I'm looking for periods where I can you know, pyramid when it's necessary. So, it's going to be a growing thing for me, you know, doing this live with you. So that way I can listen to your feedback and, and try to be, at least in this part of the feedback, at least try to be a little bit more sensitive than you normally would because I'm easily offended when I see other people show no consideration for the fact that I'm doing this for free when I don't need to do it at all. So I'm looking for constructive criticism. I may not take your criticism under advisement and even implement it or use it. I won't be rude and, and snap back at you, but I may use it in the live streams going forward if it's useful. If it's something I know I can accommodate, I'm absolutely willing to do that. But I'm not gonna be doing, have it your way. Can you pull up gold? Can you pull up crude oil? We're not doing that, okay? We're focusing primarily on the S&P because you only need one market. And whatever you see me doing this entire year, if you're a euro dollar trader, okay, or you are a dollar uh, dollar CAD trader, you know, whatever whatever the forex market that you trade, it's applicable. Everything everything runs on this same algorithm. That's what you're going to discover. I, mean, I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> I said the other day, I'm not going to talk about algorithms anymore. Um, the characteristics tend to repeat themselves across major markets. I think that's a nice, ambiguous way of saying it without causing any people that don't believe there's an algorithm to get all upset. But technical analysis, you know, when we look at the marketplace and what I'm going to be training you to do, if you're already profitable, um, some of the things that you'll see me do, might resonate with you because you have a lot more experience and you know what you're looking for in terms of price action. You might be bullish when I am expecting higher prices and you may not see these entry points that I'm going to refer to as price paints. In the beginning, it'll feel like, I don't understand what he's doing that for. 
But when it's day after day of doing it, week after week, and then month after month, and you look back over the course of the entire year, you're going to see, wow. Wow. Yeah, well, I can really see that. I can really see that happening. And there's nothing except for the open high, low, and close on the chart. The only things I'm putting on there is to highlight what it is that you should see specifically in this specific area, what my attention is focused on, and only in that. So don't look at anything else on the chart outside of whatever I'm referring to, because everything is inside that specific moment in that series of candles in that fractal. And that sounds like a mouthful, but you'll understand exactly what I mean starting on Tuesday. When we start, I'll walk you through a traditional market analysis. You know, what, I'm, what I see from a traditional stance, what every trader would expect to see, and that may or may not align with what I think is going to occur in price. And it doesn't mean I'm going to be right all the time. So don't be, don't be tricked into thinking just because you've seen almost 100% accuracy for a day-by-day -day basis for as long as I've been going that I won't get it wrong. I will. It's absolutely, it's absolutely going to happen. And I am, in fact, I'm looking forward to that because I want you to see that it's going to be very infrequent. And that's the benefit. So you're afraid of being wrong. Some of you out there that don't like me think I've been afraid to do that. I've not been afraid to do this. I just don't want to do it prior to now because it's easily copycatted. It's easily parroted for people that don't know me and they're running channels and running services, it's going to be very easy for them to repeat what I'm saying. And if the audience that they have in front of them is not aware of me doing it for free out in front of everyone and I'm accurate, it's going to make them look accurate. And I'm so the whole reason why I didn't want to do it. But this year I'll give you my year. I don't care. <laughs> okay. I can give you a year and it still won't take any skin off my back. And it will hopefully help a lot of you in, in the course of doing it. So by traditional analysis or market analysis, um, that really entails a macro analysis, looking at the higher time frame, monthly, weekly, daily. Uh, what's the quarterly shift that we're presently in or about to transition out of? Um, seasonal tendencies, you know, very long-term macro perspectives, you know, where the market is really likely to be going on a higher time frame. That, that doesn't really impact a lot of the day trades that I do because I can be buying and selling the same day on any given day. You know, I could literally flip a quarter and say, okay, if it's heads, I can only be a buyer today. And then I could just make money doing buying in a down day. I can, and these are all things I've done over the years to teach myself that, yes, there's, a, there's an importance behind narrative and bias, but I can trade without a bias. You will learn how to do that this year. You do not need to be painted into this box that sometimes it makes, it makes you feel like when you're watching my videos, like this is the only way you can do it. No, there's lots of ways. There's lots of ways. Price is constantly moving. And you're going to see the plethora of types of setups that are available to you. And just because I'm not taking them doesn't mean that they're not valid. I just, I'm not worrying about that one. I'm looking for something else. You know, I'm looking for a different cherry to pick, if you will. <laughs> you might like a plum, okay? You might like an apple. You might like an orange, okay? There's a, there's a different variety out there, and I'll show you how to bring your own personality to it and not be forced into any particular mold. So that way it feels more organic to you. It feels like it's your method, your, method, your, your model. And while I helped you, you've adopted it as your own. And it's really important to have that as a trader because copycat trading doesn't work. Unless you're doing signals you know, and you're allowing your, your trades to be copied, which is what I don't do, uh, there's no real benefit to that if you're trying to learn how to trade. Now, if you have no interest in becoming a trader, but you want to be profitable and you found someone that's got a hot hand and it makes, them, makes their signals available, then, then there's nothing wrong with that either. But I don't think anyone should be following someone's signals if your interest is in trying to learn how to do this. Because the only thing you're going to do is develop codependency. And I think you'll see this year, I'm not going to develop or cultivate codependency. I'm teaching you independence. I want you, be, I want you all to be able to say at the end of the year, 
because of what you've taught me, because we walk through the charts live, a lot of the questions and, and misunderstandings and fear has been countered. And now I feel independent apart from you. And I, I feel like I can go forward without you. That's exactly what I'm aiming for. I'm not aiming for you got to keep coming to my channel for ad revenue. That's not what I'm doing. I'm showing you how you don't ever need to come back to my channel after this year. How's that work for you? How's that a marketing ploy for you? <laughs> I, I, that's exactly what I want. I want you to be independent and you should want that. Every trader should want that. Every trader should want that of the outcome and the experience with a mentor. I could, I could form this into something where it makes you feel like you have to be with me forever. And I could fleece you for life. And you would be gladly paying me if I was going to do that. I don't want that. I want you to do this independent. You don't need to buy anybody else's stuff. You don't even need to buy my books. Okay? Don't, you won't need to do that. It's not an upsell. I'm not building the audience that way. I have more people buying my book. I'm going to prove that you won't even need to do that at the end of this year because you'll know exactly what to do. So there's no risk here. There's no risk. None. You have zero risk. You have all upside. And it's exciting because you're going to see something that no one else is able to do because they have a business. They have an image. They have to make revenue selling their stuff. I don't need to do that. And I love doing this. So you're going to have a market analysis given to you. And we will lean on that. And it's macro analysis, as I mentioned, the higher time frame stuff, the seasonal tendencies. And then I will do a top down analysis from monthly all the way down to a 15 minute time frame. So that way you know every time frame what I'm looking at, what I think is salient for that particular day. Nothing is going to be hidden from you. I will have nothing on another chart that you didn't see. Every single time frame, I'll walk you through it. Nothing is hidden from you. Absolutely 100% transparency. You will see and know everything that I observe and see and identify in every time frame. Every key level will be made mention of. That's a traditional market analysis. There's nothing inherently special about that. We all start there. It's useful. And where it's pertinent, I will show you how the retail will see it. The average trader, the hedge fund trader, what they see in price. And I will show you how to use what I teach is technical science, where it frames the narrative. How are the funds? Because that's why this business is what it is. They're not after your stop. They're not after Baby Pips Communities stops. They're not looking at Forex Factories, you know, message boards, community stops. You're just following the same logic that these large funds use. That's just the way it is. So the market seeks that liquidity. And I'm going to teach you how to identify those arm wrestling matches where the fund managers positions. Wait a minute, Michael. You said fund manager. These people are the billionaires. Yeah. Yeah, they are. But their trades aren't high accuracy. They're trying to make 15 to 25 percent a year. You know what some of you are trying to do in one morning session. <laughs> They're not trying to do a whole lot. And they can weather being wrong a lot. Because, number one, they're using other people's money. They know there's a sucker born every minute. Every time the market goes up, oh, man, somebody made money today. I wish I could. Let me put some money in my 401k. Let me go in here and put my money in this fund over here. So there's always a new influx of suckers coming into that. This market is constantly bringing in people. And it's throwing people on their rear end through loss fear, you know, margin calls. The, the, the industry's constantly got a revolving door. But it's never going to run short of new people wanting to come in. Why? Because your jobs suck and they never pay enough. 
I don't care who you are. I got surgeons in here. They make over $700,000 a year. And ain't enough. Okay, come on. So there's always going to be greed. So this approach to trading is never, ever, ever, ever going to stop working. Because these same mindsets that come in are indoctrinated to do the same stuff that these books talk about. And these arm wrestling matches, when their stop loss, where their premise about where the market's going to go based on a pattern or a moving average pointing some direction or another, when that fallacy is placed as an opposing view to what the actual market's going to do, I'm trying very hard not to use <laughs> the word that shall not be named. Um, the approach that I employ and how I use price action to predict a future outcome, when there's an arm wrestling match between the retail perspective on what price should do versus what it is that I do, what I've taught you and what I'm teaching you ongoing, those are perfect snapshots of exactly how you are going to want to trade. You're going to be looking for those perfect conditions. They're perfect because you have at that moment the highest probability for the market to go to where real large pools of liquidity are resting. How do you know baby pip stops are where, wherever they're at in a particular currency? You don't. You can speculate and say, well, it should be here, it should be there. But do you know for certain? No. But you know darn well above a daily high or a four-hour high or an hourly high, funds have their orders sitting right above that. So the market will absolutely go there. It's going to go there. Especially if there's a retail theory suggesting otherwise. So if you were asking me, if we were casually meeting at a, at a bar or whatever, which is something I don't frequent, I don't go to a bar, but if we were to meet one evening and say, hey, you know, how's it going? We just got to talking. What do you do for a living? You know, what do you do? Blah, blah, blah. I basically look for weak-handed positions to fall into the lap as an arm wrestling match with smart money. And I capitalize on that. And that's how I would reply. Person listening to that, they're not interested in trading. It's a, it suffices. Oh, wow. You sound like you really got it figured out. I don't need to go into a chart. I don't need to show them anything on my phone. It's just, oh, wow. Wow. Okay. That makes sense. So you're looking for the dumb money. Exactly. But I try not to say dumb money because it's derogatory. I always use the word street money or retail. But ICT, if you're trading in an account with think or swim, you're trading retail. Uh, that would be true. Anyone that's trading in a brokerage firm like that, that would absolutely be true. But I can't trade retail. So I can't submit myself to that. And I'm trying to also cause a paradigm shift in your thought process about what you think you know about the markets and how it really books. And then when you can look at the markets and see these arm wrestling matches between what the retail crowd, everybody learns the same things. Everybody is thinking the same thing. You got two moving averages, they've crossed, they're pointing up. It looks as it's going to keep going up. And it's had a small little rally higher. And now it's consolidating, but slightly sloping down. Oh, everybody knows what that is. That's a bull flag. Uh, not if we have just literally traded into a premium PD array and we're in a larger scale sell model. You're looking at a potential smart money reversal. But the retail crowd has no idea about what that is. 
they're expecting continuation because the moving average is pointing up. I started with moving averages and it's helpful in the middle of the moves. At the end and at the beginning, they're useless. Absolutely useless. You'll get chopped up and beat up in those points and also when we're in consolidations. And that's part of why I will be doing a traditional technical analysis and market analysis and then showing you technical science, which is building narrative. And then from that narrative, bias for the day and for the session. How do I do that? How do I, how do I arrive at a bias? I might be long-term in a buy model. It means I'm primarily looking for higher prices on a daily chart and weekly chart. But my narrative and bias for the session morning may be bearish. Well, wait a minute. Wouldn't that be low probability? No. No. Because if the conditions are correct, everything I'm looking for at the time that would allow me to come to that conclusion, you will know about them. That way you have real world, real world experience with someone that's been doing it for a long time and behind the curtain view. You've already seen me prove to you daily I can do this. How many times did I call something and it not happen? Show me a MyFX book. No, I will call it live. Count how many times I got it wrong. Did it go exactly where I said it was going to go? That's proof. My effects books, that, that can be faked. I cannot fake it in front of a quarter of a million people. They all see the same thing live. And when you watch me live over a chart, there will be a small delay between me talking and your computer or device receiving what it is I said. But once I say it, I can't edit it. It's going to arrive at your computer or your device eventually. It is what it is. And it won't matter because I'm going to tell you where I believe the market's going to go. You're not going to need a to the second update of what is going that's going on. Because I already will frame out the day. I'll show you what I'm looking for, why it should do this, why it shouldn't do that. And it'll hopefully, hopefully, this is my goal by doing this, it will disarm you. It'll relax you because you're all coming with this fevered concern that. It's all going to stop working. I better, I better start making money with it right now because Mike's, Mike, Mike he's, he's giving it to everybody. They're going to change it. They're going to take my opportunity away because he's being so generous. And I don't want to cuss him out because I want to learn from him too. But this asshole is making it impossible for me if he keeps going on. No. Relax. Relax. Trust me. Trust me. It's not going to change. Will you get it wrong sometimes? Absolutely. You will see me get it wrong. And it will be nothing in the grand scheme of the entire year. I want you to see me get it wrong. I absolutely want to see it happen. Because some of you are going to lose your friggin' minds. What? Oh, my goodness. And you're going to wrestle with something. Feelings and emotions and concern, anxiety. Your hero got it wrong. And that's going to be good for you. That's a growing pain. And you'll see, it's nothing. It's a paper cut. Just leave it alone. It'll heal. But all this concern that things are going to change and it's going to be made impossible for you to be able to do it because I, I'm bringing all these other individuals into the, the mix. It doesn't change it. You have no idea how deep this market is. It's a lot of money in this marketplace. I could have millions of followers and it isn't going to change anything. The market's going to do what the market's going to do, period. So you'll be disarmed this year. You'll see that there's nothing you should have been worrying about. You should have just went through the process like I've told you to do this very way, and you would have learned sooner. But you'll understand by technical science, no, technical science aspect of what it is I do. And the reason I'm saying technical science is because the guys over in Goldman Sachs, the they made a remark one time. Um, yeah, you know, you don't have to complicate this stuff because they see everything I talk about. They see the things I teach, and it's a lot of moving parts. And because, you know, they don't really make any decisions. They just follow a long-term model and hope it moves in their favor with somebody else's money. Uh, that idea allows them to be 
standoffish, snooty, snobberish. Like, hey, you know, you know, we don't need to do that. It's too much effort, too much technical science. It's only, it's, it's, it's just trading. It's not technical science. So when I heard that, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take that and run with it. And it, it really is very similar to what you could call what it is I do and what my students do. It's technical science. See, when you look at an indicator and you're looking at moving averages and you're looking at all the things that everybody else knows about in books. Now, I want you to think about this, okay? This has nothing to do with the word that shall not be named. It's common sense. If everybody, if everybody knows that if an 18 day moving average crosses over a 40 day moving average, and they're both sloping up. That's called stacking. Okay, when they're both pointing in the same direction up. And then an indicator, like a slow stochastics, 14 period slow, slow stochastics smoothed by a, a 3%. If that is used as your oversold condition and you see it cross over and start pointing up after being oversold, everybody that's ever read anything about books knows that that would classically be defined as what? That's a buy signal. Okay. Everybody knows that. But pray tell, why is it that everybody isn't making millions of dollars with that? Exactly. It's more to it than that. There has to be something to ferret out what? The shit that doesn't work. Because there's so many indicators and so many variables and so many potential theories inside of retail logic. How does the market and how does the participants of that market determine which flavor of the market retail logic they're going to use for that day, for that market, for that time frame, for that session of that day in that time frame? You see how infinitely this is ludicrous. It's, it's madness. And when I took a step back and looked at my own approach to doing this and seeing the results not being supportive at all, I was like, okay, there's, there's a way to do this. But it's not by doing this, applying different things all the time, constantly evolving, thinking I'm evolving into a better version of a retail trader. But in fact, all I was doing was constantly adding more dirt and making the water even harder to see through. But you feel like you're doing something constructive. I'm going to show you the opposite, even with my own content, which is what it's been all the time. But because you see that mountainous volume of work that I've put on my YouTube channel, I ain't going through all those 900 and some videos. Good grief. Not that there's not, I don't even know how many videos there are, <laughs> but I know I've made, a, I've made a lot of videos over the time of teaching. I want you to know what it looks like using a simple approach to what it is that I do, using that model from last year. I'm also going to teach you a variable in it. So that way, when we look at price action, what we're trying to do is ascertain what it is that the retail crowd is going to be likely expecting. You have to know what that is. Not because we want to duplicate or replicate or mimic it. We have to know what they're likely to anticipate in price because that crowd is most, most of the time inaccurate. They tend to be the losing crowd most times. Now, inside that community of traders, there are diamonds. Traders that still find consistently profitable outcomes. But that logic, even those individuals use, is flawed. I'm not knocking profitability. I'm not knocking experience. I'm not knocking the accolades they take it show and lay it on the table and say, here's what I've done. Here's all the proof. Here's all the my effects books. Here's all the track records. Here's all. I'm not arguing that th those are facts. That's fine. I'm still arguing the fact that you're impressing upon anyone willing to listen to you and in to the person in the mirror. 
But that's the reason why the market did what it was doing. It has nothing to do with it. You're a good money manager. And that's commendable. Absolutely. But you're going to learn how to see price as it really is this year. And you're going to know what real jade is. Because I'm going to show you what real jade is. See, you've seen me show you jade every single day. I placed real jade in your hands on Twitter, tweeting to you a specific candle on a specific day and pointing to another direction away from it. So you know what I'm expecting. Calling it out real time every single day, every single day. It's boring, isn't it? You know what's going to happen. ICT is going to sign on to Twitter. He's going to talk about something in the marketplace. And it's, going to, it's going to deliver in your charts. And you're like, man, this just keeps happening. This just keeps happening. This just keeps happening. That's exactly what it will feel like for you at the end of this year. You won't need ICT on Twitter. I'm trying to make myself irrelevant. Again, how is that a marketing ploy? I want you to be done with me at the end of this year. Some of you, oh, I don't want you to separate yourself from us. You do want me to separate you and I. You do. Because that's independence. That's exactly what I want all of my students to have. And I don't feel any heartbreak over that. That's exactly what I'm trying to teach you to be. I want that. That's the outcome I want. You want me to be glad handing with you continuously. And that's normal. But th there's a point at which a trader says, all right, I want independence. I don't want to be tethered to this person or this model or this service, this product. I want to be able to walk the walk myself and know, yeah, I might get slapped around once in a while, but it's not going to take me out of the game. I know how to weather it. And I'm going to continue with this approach because I know it will deliver consistent potential profitability. That's what every trader wants. The confidence knowing that they will be okay on their own. And most of you right now don't have that. So I'm doing the best thing I can. And really, frankly, the last thing I could do, except for trade your accounts for you, put a trade copier out there. <laughs> the, the navigation through price action using just a couple things that basically you already know and streamlining it. So that way you know this is all you have to worry about. But ICT... Why aren't you looking at this time frame that had an orb? If I'm not talking about it, I'm not using it. Think about it now. You're bringing everything. You're bringing the kitchen sink approach. Just because I've taught many things on that channel doesn't mean I'm bringing all of it to these live sessions. Some of you are going to be like, wow, this is really simple. Exactly. Exactly. And you would have discovered that had you done all of these things on your own. But you don't want to feel like you're wasting your time. And some of you are still going to be sitting in these live streams and disconnect, turn it off and say, this is wasting my time. And I want you to know here, to, here right now, hear me. You will never, you will never make it as a trader because you're not able to subscribe to a point of view long enough to see if it's really worthwhile or not. I already know it works. I have students all around the world that are making real money with it. I don't need you to support it. I know it works. But I'm making it available to even you, the doubters, the cynics, the skeptics. I mean, the skeptics. <laughs> so we will arrive at a narrative each day. What I think might pan out in terms of price action. And because of that narrative, I will subscribe to a bias for the day and for that particular live session, whether it be the morning session, predominantly they're gonna be morning sessions, but throughout the year, I'm gonna sprinkle in afternoon sessions so that way we're not just doing one trick pony morning sessions. And some days if I feel you know, that my family and my wife will be in support of the idea, I might do the morning and the afternoon session that day. But we'll take that on a day by day basis and I'm not promising it but it's likely to occur because I'm going to ask her you know, throughout the year if it's something really designed to you know, do well. Um, or maybe it's something I will show you how if maybe I get the morning session wrong. OK, it's going to happen. I'm human. I'll say, OK, well, let's meet back again at 1.30 and we'll do the afternoon session. 
and see how would I try to mitigate if I took a live trade, which you won't see me pushing the button in, but you will see me outline where the market should go. This is a particular PD array. The market should go higher or lower from here. And this is where the market should not go to. When I say it should not go there, in your mind, when you're journaling after the fact, not pushing a button and putting a stop loss in there, but that's the equivalent thereof. And you'll see what I mean. I'll, I'll do a couple mock-ups in the first couple weeks and show you what you what you should be doing in terms of post live stream. Everything you heard me talk about, what I did in my charts, you'll have my whole you know, chart with the annotations, obviously, as I'm going throughout the day. But I also, I, I don't know if I'll tweet it or if I'll post it on TradingView. I'll publish. Maybe I'll, maybe that's what I'll start doing on TradingView. I'll publish end of day like a journal. Let me know. Give me a one in response to the tweet that shows this live stream or this podcast or what is it called here? Twitter space. But give me a number one if you would like me to use TradingView and publish my chart and with all my, my, per, my personal annotations and observations that I think are pertinent to that particular live session. And then I'll just publish it right to So if you follow me on TradingView, you'll be able to just go to, my, I guess, my profile. I've never done anything on TradingView like that, but I know you can publish things there. And I'll just treat that as this year's like journal. And anything noteworthy, I'll just, I'll just dump it there. And that way you can see it. It'll stay there. And it's pretty much, I think it's easy to see it. I've seen other people doing it. But uh, so you'll, I'll, I'll go through the analysis, traditional market analysis. Then I'll go through how I develop my own personal narrative in the morning, what things I'm utilizing. So by repetition, you'll see, oh, this is all it took to do that? Yeah. And then bias, why it should do this, go up, or why it should go down. And you'll see everything that you're doing that's complicating it. I'm not complicating this. I've never complicated it. It's just you're trying to read another language that you've never learned yet. But once you understand the language, you see that there's very little that's necessary or required for you to find setups that pay out. And then after we arrive at the bias within that narrative that I'm going to frame for you, we'll look for precision signatures. And what are they? Specific elements within time of day and specific PD arrays inside the PD array matrix. What, what is that? Well, it depends on what the market's presenting me because not every run is going to have a breaker. Not every run is going to have a fair value gap. Eventually they will, but not in the beginning of the move. And you'll see and you'll hear and you'll understand this is what the market's presenting us right now. Right now, this is what you need to focus on. Does the market look to do this? Does it do that? And you'll, you'll see it, folks. You will see it and it will come alive. The charts will start communicating much more information to you than what you already see now. It'll feel like the same way it feels when you look at a hindsight chart and you say, oh, if I just would have saw that real time, you're going to see me do that real time. You're going to see it. You've already seen enough of it. You've seen an, you've seen that through tweets. It's codified and time stamped. There's nothing being deleted. Okay. As much as I want to go back and delete some of these embarrassing typos, I don't delete anything. It's there. And it can't be argued. It was called beforehand and it delivered to the tick daily, weekly. And that's what my subscribers have seen, my long term students. They've seen years of that every single day using higher time frame charts. So don't be afraid or think that this doesn't fit me. As much as I want to use this information ICT, I just simply cannot trade intraday charts. My life doesn't allow me to do this, and I'm struggling. What do I do? You study what I've taught in these live sessions and apply it to higher time frame charts. It's the same thing, folks. If I show you examples and I, and I hide, I take away the time frame, and I say, what do you see here? Do you see this, 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 this? You'll see it's the same thing because price is fractal. The same things that we'll do on a one-minute chart, a 30-second chart. I said that right, 30 seconds. Every, every candle is 30 seconds in interval. It's the same thing applied 
in that time frame, all the way up to a weekly and monthly, to a quarterly chart, to a yearly chart. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Price is following the same characteristics of delivery, no matter what time frame you're using. And you're going to know. How do you know what time frame to use? I'm going to show you that. But I can't write a paragraph in a book or a chapter in a book. I can't do a video series and just do stale examples of it. And you get the real understanding of what it is to understand what it is I'm teaching you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to lay it in your hands Every single time we come together live, you will understand exactly, exactly what to do, what not to do, what to focus on, what not to focus on. What's the things I'm not supposed to focus on? Everything I'm not talking about. If I'm not mentioning it, it's not important. And I'm telling you, your face is going to ache because you're going to be smiling because it's like this is so much easier than I thought it was. Yes. And you have delayed that gratification. You have, not me, you have. You haven't sat, simply sat down and did the work of being in front of these charts. When it's uncertain, it's scary, you might get it wrong. That's wonderful. That's opportunities for you to learn and grow. But you look at that as failure. That's not failure. How is it failure if you've never put a live trade on? You didn't take a loss there. In the same capacity, Reversing it and when it does something right in your favor, you can't look at that and call that success. You didn't make profits on that. So see what happens when you start doing that? You want to you skew the results of your progress. And these milestones are hidden from you because you want to have a report card. Am I doing right? On my first day of school, I don't know how to write the alphabet. I don't know how to do simple arithmetic. I can't even write the number three. But I should know how to figure out six times eight. I should know what the square root of nine is. On your first day, that's unrealistic expectations. And social media has cultivated that. Your expectations on yourself and however everyone else around you should view you is completely diametrically opposed to reality. And you're going to see there's nothing to worry about. You're going to lose. You're going to miss. You're going to do it right, but not do it good enough. That's all normal. That's all normal. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's a way to protect yourself in this. You still will lose money when you do it with a live account. But you absolutely do not listen to these influencers on YouTube tell you, if I could go back in time, I would go in there and I would never use a demo account. I would start with the smallest amount of money in trading. Swaggy, that's not good advice. I do not subscribe to that view. And I think if anybody was really trying to learn how to do this, that's the worst advice you can give anybody. That's the absolute stupidest, stupidest thing to do. If you want to learn how to shoot a gun really well, practice very first time with live ammunition. You've never handled a gun before. Let's go out there to the, the gun range and let's work with an AR-15. Really? Really? Let's test the efficacy of parachutes with somebody else packing your chute. Suddenly you don't want to do that, do you? That's the equivalent of going out there and trying to learn how to trade with live money. I don't care if it's the smallest amount that your broker will allow you to do. You are building all of this expectation. Listen, we all know nobody's here. Nobody's in this industry. Nobody starts trading to look smart. OK, nobody joins this industry to stand out in the crowd to be looked up only on the basis of being right as a trader. We came to this industry to make fucking money. That's it. No other business. Now, everything else after that are, are bonuses. They're things that build up. 
the reasons why and, and support, oh, this is something, uh, this is a der uh, uh, derivative of being successful as a trader. So go back to square one. You want to learn how to fucking make money? I will show you how to make fucking money. But you have to start by learning what these candles are going to do. And the way you learn that correctly is remove money. Remove it. Take it away. Because you're trying to make this about the money when you're not even ready to be able to call the market correctly. Every time you look at the chart, if you have that minuscule account balance, push the button, you're in a trade. You're, you're trading the smallest lots. And so I, I'm not beating you up. I'm just saying I, I, I saw a clip sent to me. And they asked, do I subscribe to that view? I'm like, no. I'm not knocking you. I'm not you know, trying to be rude or anything. But you have a lot of followers. And people with a lot of followers have a great deal of influence. And I am trying to be as responsible as I possibly can and still not be, well, disrespectful. By taking any trade, when you have zero understanding of what it is that you're doing, you have zero understanding about what you're going to feel as a trader while you're in a trade, everybody will come to that threshold eventually when they put a live account on and they push that first button. But don't rush that. For years, for years, I made YouTube videos. Never monetized them. Never did any of it. My son told me multiple times, Dad, why don't you just turn on ad revenue? I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't, want to, I don't want to do it. And then when my daughter says, no, I, I can't trade, Dad. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to just dip into my money every month and say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work my ass off and take on risk and do this and this, and I'm going to you know, prop you up in your lifestyle because you don't want to trade. I'm making it available to you. It's on the YouTube channel. Everybody else is doing it. And every time I see people and I share it on my Twitter feed, I share it on my community post. Here's people doing your model. My daughter still is not motivated by that. You got people out there saying, oh, if ICT was so good at trading, his own kid doesn't even want to trade. Doesn't that tell you something? No, it just tells you she's a woman that's very stubborn. <laughs> okay, that's all it is. She's stubborn. She doesn't want to do it. Okay. You can't make her. Husbands, you can't make them do what you want them to fucking do. So stop trying. So I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to lose my mind over that. So my ad revenue goes right to my daughter. Anytime she needs something, there's the kitty. There's the cookie jar it comes out of. Now, why am I even mentioning that? You prove, you prove that there is a value to it people come to that channel they watch videos it's great wonderful okay i've always could have been making this ad revenue but i didn't worry about it just like your trading you already know nobody needs to be reminded if you do this right and you did it with a live account what's going to happen you're going to have more money in that account before you put that trade on that's a that's it's expected, right? That's why you're here. That's why you're even listening to me. That's what you're listening to me to get to that point where you don't have to listen to this bullshit rant stuff anymore. You can go out and get your own money, get your own bag. But you don't even realize the things I'm talking about that are outside that chart. That's the shit that's going to prevent you from doing it. That's the stuff that's in the way, but you don't see it. You, you, you have blinders on like my daughter. She is in her own way. I am not going to lose my fucking mind trying to tell her it's you, it's you, it's you. Because then she'll take it as, Dad, you're, you're making me uncomfortable and you're telling me things that's not encouraging me. So I know my limitations. I'm telling you as your mentor in trading, I know your limitations. And as a human being, you will not learn anything correctly by going right into a live account. Here's what you're gonna learn. Fuck, I should've never done that. And at that right there, that moment, 
that that I wish I wouldn't have done that. You need to go and lose money to know that you shouldn't have done that. That's asinine. Why do you need to have that scar? You really need that to know that if you push the button incorrectly, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You're going to lose money. You need to know that. You don't already know that. That's what goes on in this business all the time. People lose their ass all the time. They blow their account, margin call, out of the business, goodbye. You need that to make it real for you. Because I'm going to tell you something. As soon as you do that, that right there, that's the shoe in your rock. Oh, I said that wrong. <laughs> it's the rock in your shoe that you'll walk with the rest of your career. It'll play. I got shit that I did from 1993 that creep into my mind when I still do trades today. And you see how precise I am. And that shit still comes up in my head. And you have to be able to say, get behind me. I'm focusing on what I'm doing right now. Now. It took a lot of decades and years to get to where I can do that today. But do you think you have the wherewithal to do that as a new startup? Fuck no, you do not. I don't give a shit where you came from, what you can do. You can't do that, folks. This is hard. This shit is hard. And you're placing all of that unnecessary pressure and stress on yourself when you don't even know who the fuck you are as a trader. You don't even know what you're doing. You have no idea what you're doing. What you're going to finally settle in on as a model. So apparently it's not hard enough for you. You want to go out there and make it an Olympic feat. Because deep down inside, what you really want to be able to tell the world is, I never did a demo. I went out there and I started making money right from fucking Jump Street. And that shit never fucking happens. It never happens. Because you pick up bad habits. What habits? Being fearful. When I place a trade, I don't give a flying fuck what is going to happen. I don't care. If it goes to my target, great. If it hits my stop, I don't give a shit. I have so I have literally, I have trades constantly popping up in my understanding about what I'm looking at in price. I can go through any market and scan through any time frame. I will find a setup. You will be able to do that same shit at the end of this year. That's a guaranteed promise. You're going to fucking do that. But you have to go through the right stages of learning. And you can't be worrying about money. Think about it. Think it look, 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 folks. I and mean, this is the last time I'm ever going to fucking mention this shit. This is pissing me off now. And think about it. The fact that you're listening to this guy talking to you right now. What does that communicate to you? Look in the audience members. Look how many people. I don't know. I don't I ever look at it. So I'm afraid I'll see a name that I know. <laughs> and I'll think to myself, wow, I said that many F-bombs in front of that person. How embarrassing. So I, this way, I can just talk unfiltered. And I don't give a fuck if I offend somebody. It's not intended. It's meant for you to be improved upon. And yes, this is abrasive. I'm, sand, I'm like sandpaper. I'm smoothing out your, your rough edges with me being coarse. But you need to hear this kind of stuff. But the fact that you're fucking even here listening to me, what does that mean? You could be doing anything you want to do on Saturday. You're fucking spending it here with me or watching this or listening to this later on or watching a video on YouTube that somebody's taken and uploaded. You're listening to this because you don't have your shit together. You got a job. It pays your bills, maybe barely. Or maybe it does pay your bills, but you're not satisfied. You want more. Okay, wonderful, perfect. Every night when you can barely make your bills, gentlemen, ladies, think about it for a second, okay? Seriously. You're laying your head down on your pillow, and you're thinking to yourself, fuck. It's middle of the week. I still got this many days to still work and all of my money for my fucking paycheck is already spent. What am I going to do? You have to rest because you have those days to go to work and do what's necessary to get that money that you haven't 
really secured yet. You haven't even done the work yet, and you're worrying about the fucking money. You can't make that go away because you're worrying about it. And even when you do the work and you finish that work week, you already know that you still don't have enough fucking money to meet your bills. That's the equivalent of what the fuck you people are doing trying to go out there with a live account. You're putting unnecessary stress. You're not going to make more money because you did that with a live account before you should have. The only thing you're going to do is cause sleepless fucking nights. You're making it harder. And you're fucking blaming me for it. I'm telling you not to do this shit, and you're still wanting to do it. Guy tells me, oh, I, should tell you, I, I, should, you know, I, I shit the bed yesterday in the fucking non-farm payroll. I feel really bad about myself. You're doing every fucking thing I told you not to do. I told you, don't fucking trade non-farm payroll. I told you, don't go on fucking social media and boohoo. Don't fucking negatively charge your fucking results. Don't record it like that. What are you doing? You're doing everything backwards. And who are you talking it to? You're talking it to me like I fucking caused that for you. That's exactly what you're going to see people doing this year. They're going to get in there. They're going to push a fucking button based on what I'm talking about in the marketplace. They're going to hurt themselves. And they're going to make fucking videos and say, ICT shit doesn't work. Look, here's the proof. I fucked up. No, yeah, you're right. You fucked up. You fucked up. You want a mentor? You want somebody to tell you how to do this? Guide you through the fucking jungle, show you where the fucking the quicksand is. Here's where the snake pits are. This is the shit that's going to rip your ass off. Avoid those things. Why? Why do you want to fucking go through that shit? Because you have a character flaw. And you're walking around with blinders on, trying to ignore it. And looking for any opportunity to put the blame and fault on your failure, something outside of yourself. That's the ugly part about this business. It is a mirror that you can't hide your real self. Everything that's wrong with you is going to manifest itself in your trades. You're impatient. You're going to fucking see it. You're reckless. You're absolutely going to fucking see it. You're impulsive and gamblers. You're really going to see it. I'm in drawdown. Fuck, I better go to fucking max leverage. No stop loss. And that's a mentor. That's a mentor doing that. Fuck it is. That's a gambler. That's somebody that does, know, does not know what the fuck they're doing. I get animated and I get heated like this. And you might hear this stuff out of context and listen to it, just a small clip. Like, this guy's fucking nuts. I am the motherfucker you want to listen to. I've done it all. I know how to get you here. I've proven it every single fucking day for years. Years and years. Where's your record at ICT? It's in the fucking annals of fucking history. Ask my fucking students. Why aren't they out there saying this shit don't work? But there's more people coming forward. Making money. Making money. Making annual salaries. Making annual salaries. Where's the fucking proof? Find your own fucking proof. Find it. It's waiting for you. Why are you fucking around and waiting? You got to step out there. And do the work that every one of these people that are making real progress and real fucking money, they think they give a flying fuck how much you doubt it right now. They're not even worried about you. They're in their own world right now running after their dreams, pursuing excellence. They don't give a flying fuck who doubts them now. They don't give a shit about their parents, what they thought about it now. They don't give a fuck about their friends, their coworkers. Fuck Carl. He can have employee of the fucking month parking spot every fucking day of the week. Who gives a shit? You're out of here. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's why I'm fucking here. All, all I want is for you to people to just simply fucking do what's necessary and stop fucking around. You got one year. You got one fucking year. If you don't do the work this year, it's all on you. It's all on you. And I don't give a shit who talks shit about me after this. I don't give a flying fuck. I really don't give a fuck now, really. <laughs> but it's Needless stress that you put on yourself. Needless. And you don't even recognize it. You put all this extra bullshit on yourself. On something that's already complicated. Because you have to beast this monster, this fucking juggernaut of a fucking traitor that's trapped inside of you. That's dying to get out. 
but you're so fucking formidable, you're preventing it. And you have to get out of the way. You got to let that happen. You got to let that beast out of the cage and let it find a thorn in its paw. Let it break, let it break a claw off and it, that little bit of pain. It's okay. It's okay. It still will eat. It still will devour. It still will conquer. It still will get out there and take its pound of fucking flesh. And that will be results. That's money. But you have to fucking let the process unfold naturally, organically. You can't try to protect yourself and do all these things that is bad advice from people that shouldn't be listened to in certain respects. Anybody, and listen to me, I don't give a fuck who it is. Anybody tells you the best way to learn how to trade in the beginning is to skip a demo and go right into live trading. Unfucking subscribe. Never listen to that motherfucker again. Period. There it is. That's my opinion on that matter. Period. Because these markets will rip your ass apart and mentally warp your fucking ass. I have friends that no longer breathe. They're below ground. Two of them, skip demo. Sorry, but that's the fucking really real. Anybody that tells you skip a fucking demo, go right into live trading, is absolutely fucking clueless. That's just the bottom line. That's just the fucking bottom line, and that goes for anybody. That is the worst fucking advice anybody could ever give or receive in terms of speculation in these marketplaces. Because the only thing that will do is present you toxic thinking. You are creating the very things that you're supposed to be mastering as a trader. Fear and greed. And the only thing by trading with live money before you know how to fucking trade or even manage risk that's the only outcome that's going to come from them. You're going to learn. You're going to absolutely learn. You will have personal experience with fear and greed immediately. And that goes for the rest of your career now. It takes so much effort and emphasis on balancing those characteristics once you adopt them. Because once you have them, you have them. You have them. It's it. It's over. It's like a scarlet letter. The, re the, the, the wrestling match that the trader has to do the rest of their fucking career to master themselves and be able to beat that shit off creeping into their next trade idea. It's hard. It's fucking hard. And why would you want to do that? You listen to these people out here. They ain't making real fucking money, okay? They're not. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. They tell you not to do that shit. They have not made real fucking money because I'm going to tell you something. People that made real fucking money will tell you straight up. You got to respect risk. You have to know what you're doing. You have to present yourself in a position where you aren't being tugged back and forth with fear. Oh, my gosh. I might get stopped out. What happens if I get stopped out? Who gives a fuck if you get stopped out? It's demo. You're learning how to be comfortable with being wrong. Now, that's already hard for men. It's hard. You don't think so? Ask somebody out this, this tonight when you go out to the club tonight. Ask them out. First good, first good looking person you see in the club. Walk up to them. Ask them out. What are you going to feel when they say, I got a boyfriend. I got somebody else. I'm not interested. You're fucking ugly. Get the fuck out of here. No, I don't want your fucking drink. What are you going to feel? Oh, shit. It's going to make you feel like you wish you never left your house. Now, that same mindset, you're going out there looking to get turned down immediately. And for a man, when we lose money or if we you know, get something incorrect or if we're turned down, that totally wrecks us. Not me. <laughs> I'm top G, baby. They're coming at me all angles. Bullshit. Every man thinks this way. 
I don't give a shit. Tell them they don't have it downstairs and watch how fast they turn into a little boy that loses their fucking mind. Women have amazing power over men. They're easily malleable, easily manipulated, easily defeated, and it's between their ears. And that's exactly what you invite. You invite that same easy, flawless victory over yourself by going out there and trading with real money before you're ready. You're asking for it. You're absolutely begging for it. And not realizing that that is so detrimental to you as a trader for the rest of your fucking life. It creates a thought process that will always be referred to continuously going forward. Whereas if you simply just do what I'm asking you to do, it costs no money. It does the best job of teaching you to prepare your mindset for focusing on what? What the market's doing, not is it going to give you your fucking money or not? Or is it going to take enough that you can still sleep at night? I'm not worried about that. You shouldn't be worried about that. You respect the level of risk that's out there because it's always potentially every trade you get into is a losing trade. You have to cover the costs. Until you cover the costs and close the trade out in profit, it's not profitable. Realized gain, that's the only profit. And it has to be above and beyond the costs, fees and commissions, spreads. See, everybody walks around in this industry in the beginning with blinders on. And it's, it's very frustrating for me, having been around a longer time than most of you, also suffering more than most of you would ever endure. And just stupid fucking advice, dumb shit advice. Impulsive nature. Maybe you didn't even hear it from somebody else. Maybe you didn't hear it from another influencer. They just simply go out there and start trading with live money. That's the best way to learn. It's not. That is not. The proper procedure is learn the basics about the marketplace. Learn risk management. Then, then, tape read, not demo. Tape read. Study real market action. Back test. Look at old moves. Study it in great detail. Log, journal. What, what do you want to gravitate towards as a setup? Some of you already know what that is generally, but because you see me or someone else do a video, and you're like, shit, that's how I want to trade. When that's not even the best way for you, particularly, specifically aligned with your personality. You just think that's fucking awesome. Well, that's awesome. You know what's awesome? You know what's awesome to me? Watching Mike Tyson walk out there with a fucking towel wrapped around his head, no socks, rip the shit out of some guy in 30 seconds, walk out of there and make $30 million. That was fucking awesome. It doesn't mean I'm going to be able to do that. But I can respect it. I can get in my fucking my area where I work out and I can stand in front of my mirror and I can do shadow boxing and think I'm fucking, you know, the bee's knees. <laughs> but I'm not getting in no fucking ring with no Mike Tyson. I know my limitations. But the problem is because of social media, we think that, oh, shit, I can do that too. Watch me. And it pff, shits itself. It's over. As fast as you got that money in that account, it's gone. What did you learn? I shouldn't have ever done that. I didn't know as much as I thought I did. Oh, wow. I can lose a lot faster than I thought I could have. Yeah. So the process is Basic understanding about markets. Risk management. Before you even start studying live price action or backtesting, you have to know risk management. By doing such, and it's the boring topic that nobody wants to hear about, but that's the part that gets you rich. I don't want to hear about that shit, ICT. That's the part that gets you fucking rich, pal. That's the part that fucking tells Carl... Keep your fucking desk job, bitch. I'm out of here. That's the part. The boring shit. That's the stuff that gets you there. When you go to listen to anybody else in any other industry, you go to them and they talk to you. They're imparting their wisdom. You went there because you know they're going to talk about this one thing that you went there to listen to. 
And you can't fucking stand everything else they're talking about because it's not scratching that itch. Fuck your itch. All that shit is your limited perspective about what it is that you should be doing. You're coming to someone that's the professional, the person that's in a, a, a better vantage point than you, more experience, done more than you, and you're coming to them, me or anyone else, and you're saying, I don't want to hear all this bullshit. Get to the point. The point is, you're the fucking problem. You have to be teachable. You can't cherry pick what it is you think is going to work for you when you have no experience. And that's what you're doing when you go out there with a live account. You're discovering you don't know shit. You need that lesson monetarily in terms of a loss, the embarrassment, the shame, the pride, the regret. Knowing damn well what you were going to do was a gamble. You might just take that money, go buy some fucking scratch offs. You're probably better off. After learning basic understanding about the marketplace, what is that? What market you're following? What times does it trade? What's its minimum fluctuation? What does it look like? What has it done historically? What's the margins? How much does it take to trade it? Then risk management. How much are you going to worry about incurring per trade. It's going to change once you start really trading. It'll definitely be different because in the beginning you think, I can do 2%. No, you can't. You can't. Trust me. Because as soon as you put your first live trade on and if it's a Forex pair and you, you see immediately it's a negative, as soon as you put the trade on, you're underneath the dealing spread and then it has a little bit of a drawdown against you. You really feel that 2% is too much. And now what are you thinking about? what bad advice tells you to do all the time. Get in there with a small account and learn how to trade. No, because now you're worried about shit. I wish I wouldn't have pushed this trade. I wish I would have waited for more confirmation. Here's your confirmation. Don't fucking trade with live funds until you know how to fucking trade. That's the confirmation. Everybody that's ever made money, really, and knows what the fuck they're doing, will tell you this is the best advice. You don't. You do not fucking give an offering to the market with money when you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. If you need to know, if you do it wrong, it will take money from you. Hear it from me right now. If you go in there and you do it wrong, your money is gone. There you go. Now, going past this point, it's an IQ test. Are you fucking stupid? Because stupid is going to go out there and do it with a live account, not knowing how to do it. Now, are you going to pass the IQ test? Because the fucking IQ test is very simple. You don't do it. Simple. Smooth brains are going to go out there and fucking open up a live account and try to figure out how to trade like that. And waste time, build toxic thinking, and be afraid of every trade they take in the future. Versus being indifferent to the outcome. That's the sweet spot. That's the part that it took a lot for me to get to. And before I get to that point, I'm wrestling with, oh, this reminds me of that time I took that trade in. Right. Why? Why would I even think about that? Because I lost fucking real money. More money than you earned in a year. I don't give a fuck where you're at. I, I earned, I, I, that's, the, that's still equivalent. <laughs> okay. Those things hurt. For a man, it's pride. It's ego. It dashes the sense of self-worth. And yes, I wish I had the money back in my hands. But I rushed into live trading before I should have. I'm telling you, I'm fucking telling you, with all the experience I have as teaching and with my own trading, when I first started doing it and seeing other people do it, it never pans out. It never fucking pans out. And you see these people on, well, every different venue of social media, they'll look up and say, yeah, I went out there. I didn't do demo trading and I, I learned how to trade, blah, 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 blah. I guarantee you they wouldn't be able to sit on a live stream and call the market and not have any sense of calmness. You'd see their emotions. You got to see their face now. See their face, listen to their breathing pattern, <sighs> cussing. Fuck! Oh, man. 
It's bullshit. Oh, hold on, yeah, I got I got to go to the bathroom. P- mute. <laughs> They're puking their guts up. They're wishing they never would have live streamed that day. That will be the reality of it. But you don't get to see that. You don't get to see that. Because they're only going to give you that little snapshot. What they want you to see. And these are the same types of people who are going to tell you bad advice. When that bad advice wasn't even profitable for them. So you have to guard your mind. Protect your mind while you're new. Because it's so easily, easily distracted with things that's going to cause you to hurt yourself in the way you think about the market, the way you think about yourself. You'll grade yourself too early. Oh, this person understands it more than I have, and they've been studying it less than me. Who gives a fuck? How do you know that they ain't been doing it longer and they just want to sound smart in front of everybody else on social media? Stop worrying about your social media equity curve. Everybody's in drawdown as far as I'm concerned. Because if you're out there constantly virtue signaling, trying to get attention, look at me, look at me. You're, you're really, really in drawdown. I don't give a shit. I talk to you through the medium of a demo. I don't have any shame in it. Because that's the right way to learn. But you don't even touch a demo until you've tape read, tape read, and tape read. You see the market do whatever you expect it to do without any transaction. Because what you've done is you've learned the basics about the marketplace, the market you're going to be following, every aspect of what it is required to trade it, the times it trades, its margin requirements. Then you understand risk, how to frame a, a trade in terms of monetary risk. Whatever your beginning expectations are in terms of what your trade should be allowed to take from you and the industry standard of 2% is too fucking high. It's too high. That's not realistic for someone starting out. You want it to be so insignificant that it literally feels like nothing to you. That's the right way to learn how to trade. And then by having that realistic expectation on yourself and your results, then you go into tape reading, how to learn to read price. How does it move? When does these specific types of signatures that we're teaching you, when do they occur? How does it, what does it look like? How do they repeat and look very close to one another? What does it look like when it fails? What things are warning signs that it's not likely to pan out? You haven't even touched the fucking demo account yet. And you are all still feeling impatient. Some of you already turned off this Twitter space because it ain't telling you what you want to hear. Good. Get the fuck out of here. You're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready for me, at least. The people that are making real money, they've gone through this. And you can't shortcut it. Once you see with tape reading over and over and over again, week after week, you have at least 60% of your expectations come to fruition. What? Yeah, you got to be better than half the time right. Then, only then, go into demo. Then you're going to see another growing pain because now you're looking at it with a scorecard attached to it. Are you right now? Whereas before, tape reading, you're just watching and observing, recording what your observations are. Oh, it did this, it did that. It's going to be boring for most of you that are just in here trying to copy me. That's, that's, that's the litmus test. It's going to be, why are you here? Because if you're here to learn how to trade, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do what I do. And you won't need me. But some of you want spoon-fed, five-minute trainers, signals, copy me service, you know, that type of stuff. I'm, just, I'm not doing that. I'm turning people into monsters. I'm turning people into savages. You want to make your yearly salary in a fucking month? Stay with me this year. Stay with me this year, and there is no limitations, period. You're going to lose money in the process, but you want to make what you make a year in one month? I will give you those skill sets and how to arrive at that. But you are going to be the determining factor 
how fast or at all if you get there. Not me, not the concepts, not the market. It's you. And once you get into the demo portion of learning, you trade with the lowest degree of risk you can. And you grow from that up higher, more. As you learn to trust what you're doing isn't being influenced by the outcome. That's why it takes time, folks. It takes time. You have to desensitize yourself and condition yourself to look for the process to deliver the outcome, not the trade to make me money. Because if you do these things and you're doing everything I'm training you to do and you manage risk, the derivative is the fucking profits, the limited drawdown, the corrections from drawdown. That's the, that's the fruits of everything I'm teaching you. But you all think you're going to have a vertical fucking spike on your equity curve from day one, never any drawdown. Never any adversities, never, diffi- never any difficulties in understanding what it is that you should be doing or navigating through trades. When I've told you all this time in all the rants, you're going to be dealing with that. And now you're going to equate that your failure or success is only based on your live account when you're not even ready to be trading with a live account? That's stupid. That's fucking stupid. But because you have all these other influencers, these art, these, these authors, these book writers, these course makers, these public figures, or your fucking friend that's lying to you and saying he's been doing it, he's making money, but he's showing you a fucking demo account. Everybody is going to give you everything that is diametrically opposed to what I've been beating into your head today with. And I'm the bad guy. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to work on Monday. And I can take a vacation wherever the fuck I want. And I don't work with Carl. So who are you listening to? You didn't swipe no fucking credit card here. There was no PayPal payments here. And you don't have to renew anything, no subscriptions. It's nothing. And I'm making monsters. And they're bringing the receipts. They themselves are doing it. You're seeing all the interviews from the companies. There's no proof. There's all kinds of fucking proof. Look around. And you're among them if you allow yourself. But you got to get out of the way. You have to get out of your own way. And stop worrying about, I want to know when the gaps are supposed to stay unfilled. You'll see it. I'll teach you. But it's only going to be beneficial over live data. You'll learn it by that, by repetition, over and over again. It'll desensitize you. And you'll see even sometimes when it does fill in, like, This past week here, I had two areas I wanted to see left open. Doesn't mean the trade fails. It just means that it's better for them to stay open because then if it stays open, I'm really on side. That means I'm right about where I'm at in terms of my entries and where it's likely to go. Gaps that don't fill in. This is for your notes. I'm not sure if you wrote anything down I've said today because I've been pretty animated. (laughs) The... uh, The emphasis on gaps, not closing in, if they don't fill in, it's like rocket fuel for your trade. Why? Because it is in a hurry to reprice to a level that's outside the range it's in right now. Gaps that don't fill are signatures that tell me we're going outside the present range for external range liquidity. I'll talk more about that. Even my mentorship students in private group just learned something there, too. This stuff is the sweet stuff, the sugar, okay, that makes everything I'm doing with you even sweeter. When you're in trades, you want to see specific levels that once a fair value gap forms, if you start seeing fair value gaps keep forming and not filling in and it just keeps pressing higher, man, you are in for a sweet run. It's going to run and probably go way beyond you thought it was going to go. So every time I get into a trade, I'm looking for that signature. It might not present it. But I'm looking for it because it gives me that insight. It means that I have a fucking tiger by the tail, and I want to hold on to that. And sometimes you'll see I'll move my, my – not my stop, but I'll move my target beyond what my original expectation is. It still doesn't mean that I won't take the blinds portion of the trade off where I originally had my take profit. It just means that, oh, 
shit, I might have a, a bigger run here. Let me open up the gates a little bit more wider so that way it's a clear shot for a further profit objective. But I'm still, to protect myself, because it's, it would be foolish for me to not take profits where I originally thought the take profit or terminus would be, where I thought the trade was going to go ultimately. It would be foolish for me not to at least take most of it off there. And then let, let's see if I have a runner and leave a small portion on. Now, as a new student or a new trader, your questioning is, well, if you really thought that, then why would you take off nothing and just let it all run? Well, that's because I want to make fucking money, and I'm a human being, and I'm prone to be human sometimes, and I could do it wrong. And that's infancy on your part to think that way, and maturity on my part, because I've lost lots of money, and I've made money. And you can't understand these things unless you've been there. So it's easy before you even started trading to say, well, if you're teaching this, this doesn't make any sense. It's counterintuitive. If you think it's going to go higher, why bother taking the partials off? That makes no sense. You incurred this much risk when you put the trade on. So therefore, it's stupid to scale off profits. That's somebody that's not profitable talking to you. Okay, That's somebody that's not consistently profitable. That's somebody that's talking out of their ass or someone that's a neophyte and has no idea what they're doing. And they want perfect. And perfect doesn't fucking exist. It doesn't, not in trading. It's never gonna it's never gonna be a goal you arrive at. But guess what? It's a target I aim for all the time. But I also manage myself. I manage my trades responsibly. I know that if I take out if I'm short, if I'm taking out a short term low or an intermediate term low, I better damn well fucking take something off the trade. Because I might well, I might get drunk with the whole trade and think, oh, wow, it's gonna really run farther. And if I don't take it off and it rips against me, well, oh, fuck, I just sat in that whole trade. Now, the, the argument, here's the argument and the rebuttal to people that say partials are stupid. Let me tell you something. I've seen so many people preach against me, you know, what, I'm, what I teach students to do in the beginning because it's important. It's that little reward, that cookie. It's your yellow belt from being a white belt progressively going towards the black belt. You're, you're teaching yourself that you're doing everything right. You're growing in your confidence and you're paying yourself as you grow in more thresholds and time and experience. But when I hear and see people say taking parcels is stupid because when you put a trade on, it makes no sense to say you put on a 2% risk and you're trying to do 10R. Okay. You're trying to make 10 times what you're risking. Well, that's, you're going to learn that today. I'm mean, not today, but this year as well. But their argument is if they put on a trade, or anyone puts on a trade, risks 2%, and they take partials off, you're not getting your full 10. I'm getting fucking paid, man. I'm getting fucking paid. What do you say when it goes back against you on your full, your full 2% stop? What the fuck did you make? You made jack and shit, and jack left fucking town. Bottom line is this. You're in this business to make fucking money. You're not in here to make fucking friends. Okay, That's it. These motherfuckers that tell you stupid shit are not making fucking money. And that's the bottom line. Why the fuck are you going to listen to somebody that aren't that they're not proving shit to you? They got long-winded bullshit, whether it be talk, typed out in fucking Twitter or on fucking posts or on fucking Instagram or they talk out their fucking ass on fucking YouTube and they bring no proof that they fucking know what they're talking about. Zero. That's the people you want to listen to. Get the fuck out of here. Partials pay. Okay? Partials never fail in pain. You ever think about that? There's never been a partial profit that never fucking paid profit. That's a hundred fucking percent. Hundred fucking percent. You don't know. You don't know if that stop loss is gonna get hit on your fucking trade. I don't fucking know. Nobody fucking knows that. You don't know if your target's going to fucking get hit. I don't give a flying fuck if it's a 50-R trade, 200 fucking R, all this stupid shit you see on social media. You don't know that. But guess what the fuck I do know? I know I'm getting five fucking handles. I know I'm getting fucking liquidity below that fucking short-term low, and I'm short. I know I'm fucking getting that. Every time I bark on that fucking Twitter feed and that shit delivers, you know what I know? I know what the fuck I know. That's what I know. And it delivers. You're going to know that skill set this fucking year. You're going to be able to tell these motherfuckers, pound fucking sand, motherfucker. You don't know shit. 
Get the fuck up the fucking road. Nobody's listening to your clownery shit no more. Okay? Because the real shit's here. It's here. It's not myth. It's not made up. It's not conjecture. This is the fucking market. This is how you get paid. This is how you make fucking money. This is how you manage risk. This is how you learn. This is how you progress productively. This is how you fucking do it. There ain't a fucking book out there that tells you to do it this way. There ain't no fucking course out there that tells you to do this. There ain't no fucking educator that's going to do this because they got a fucking image to maintain. Fuck image. Image don't pay shit. It don't pay shit. You know what pays? Results. I don't need anybody to like my fucking videos. I don't need you to listen to my fucking Twitter spaces. I'm getting fucking paid regardless. I'm going to do the shit I'm teaching you, and it won't make a difference who believes it or doesn't believe it. It still fucking works. And partials pay every fucking time. It's a 100% strike rate, motherfucker. What is wrong with that? Where's the logic in arguing against that? You're going to sit in that fucking trade. You're going to sit in that fucking trade and allow it to go against you and stop your whole fucking 2% or whatever the Mickey Mouse shit management you used to put it on. Oh, well, that's, that's the randomness in the marketplace. That's just what happens. You have to strike it up as you win some, you lose some. Fuck off. I ain't in here to do that. I'm not here for 50-50 shit. If you came here with that logic, I'm telling you something. That shit is going to die real quick because I'm not a 50-50 motherfucker. I might be 50 fucking years old, but I'll tell you something right now. When it comes to fucking trading, I want my results. I want my fucking potential to be on side more than 50%. And if I can't argue that in my analysis, the fuck, I'm not getting in there. I got to know that I have multiple position exits in terms of partials before I even get to my target. <gasps> what did he just say? Oh, shit. You better break that notebook out right now. Pull the fucking car over so you can type it and text it to yourself immediately. Every trade that I'm looking to take, I want at least two partials before I get to my terminus. That's a high probability trade for me. What does that mean? It's high probability it's going to go to my terminus? No. It's high probability. ICT is getting fucking paid. I'm showing up to the venue. That means I put my ass in front of the fucking charts and I push the button. I'm getting fucking paid. I'm getting paid. Nobody's fucking me out of my fucking my royalties. I showed the fuck up. Pay me, motherfucker. I don't care if I close the show down and get to the tournaments. I don't give a fuck. You don't care either. You don't know if they're going to drop a fucking bomb over here. You don't know if they're going to come up with some fucking chicken little disease and fucking something's going to cause the market to go upside down. How do you know that's not going to happen? Can you fucking tell me? Can you prove that you know that there is not going to be some fuckery going on on Monday that causes the market to take a shit? Do you know that? Because I don't know that. But you listen to these fucking 20-year-olds walking around here on social media. They got everything fucking figured out. $200, baby. And I'm trading fucking nano lots. For six fucking years, I'm still trading nano lots. But I'm doing $200. You gotta, you gotta respect me. The fuck we do. Come on, man. At some point, you gotta call bullshit. Partials is how you get paid, and you need that in the beginning. You fucking need it. You need that little oomph, that push, that reminder. This is why I'm doing this. I waited all this time for this fucking setup to happen. I'm in front of the charts. I'm pushing it. I'm in there. I need to know. I'm doing the right shit. How do you do that? You get your yellow belt. You get your blue belt as you're working towards your black belt, which is getting trades to go to Terminus, your full targets. But nobody fucking joins any martial art, walks out there, and the fucking sensei says, all right, well, you arrived. Here's your participation award. Here's your fucking black belt. But that's what you think. You would think that with all these people on social media. They watch videos, whether it be mine or other people's and shit, and all of a sudden they're trading in market replay and they're fucking authorities in the whole business. It's tiresome. It's like once you taste the real shit, 
when you have filet, when you have filet, okay, a nice piece of fucking filet right on the plate and you taste it for the first time, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. You just can't fucking have catfish, okay, <laughs> and think, oh, yeah, this, we're, we're on the same level here. We're not. It tastes like muddy water, okay? It tastes like shit. You want something, you want the real stuff, you want the meat and potatoes, you're getting that here. I don't care if you like me. I don't give a fuck if you think I'm the best mentor or not. I don't give a shit. I will teach you exactly how to rip this shit apart and build a life for yourself. And it's costing you nothing but the effort and time that you put into it. If you fail, you have failed. And the only way that failure occurs is if you quit. That's it. That's how quitting affects you. That's failure. The people that feel like they want to quit but keep pressing into it, they're the ones that are getting all these big payouts. They're the ones that are making the point of, I don't know I have to work anymore. I quit my job. They had people just like you that doubted them. They have people that still can't fucking believe that they made it. And believe me, I guarantee you, they have a whole lot of people that are fucking envious as shit now because they wanted them to fail. They wanted them to fucking fail so they can say, see, I told you, you're just like us. You're just like us. You're never going to be able to do it. So you should have just listened to us when we told you don't bother. Fuck them. Those are the people that you cut the fuck off. You don't make your business theirs. You don't, give the, you don't give the wheel to them because they're going to steer your ass right into a fucking tree. As, as much as you may think they love you, and they, may, they very well may love you, but they don't love you doing better than them. I'm going to say that again. Your friends and your family, they may love you, but they don't love you doing better than them. And that's true, especially when they tell you, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing here. It's a pipe dream. Let me tell you something. You know, what to, you know what's the sweetest fucking thing in the world? Here's the sweetest thing in the fucking world. Every Monday morning when I wake up, I stretch out my bed. I look around my room. And I'm like, you know what I ain't got to do today? Go to work. You know what my aunt and uncles and my cousins and my fucking best friends growing up through school are doing today? Going to work. I wonder what they're fucking thinking about right now. I'm only thinking about them because I don't have to do what they're doing. They're thinking about how much they don't want to be going where they got to go to get their money. Who's in a better position here? It has nothing to do with arrogance. This is how you combat that shit. Okay? All these fucking people around you, unless they're telling you, go, go, don't fucking stop, dig in, you are going to do this then you tell them nothing. If you suspect that they're not going to support you 100%, why even invite them into the conversation? Don't. Because if you love what you're doing here and you want to make this your fucking life and your career and you want to pass the skill set on to your kids, should you ever decide to have kids, you're going to be thankful that you stuck in this. It's hard. It absolutely is hard. But so is exercise and working out. You think everybody has these beautiful, symmetrical, you know, physiques that are aesthetically pleasing. Everybody strives for the bikini body, the summer body. You think they just got that because they watch shit on TV and watch exercise videos? That's the same thing you're expecting to do when you watch ICT videos. When you're watching me teach this stuff, I mean, if you're going to put your ass in front of the video or sit down and listen to me, Okay, all I'm doing is giving you the instructions on what to do, just like that exercise video. You're not getting the repetition uh, you know, benefits that they're doing. They're sweating their ass off. They're making ad revenue off of you watching their shit or purchasing their, their program. They don't give a fuck if you exercise or not. They don't care. But here, I'm reminding you constantly, if you're just watching my videos and being entertained or using them as a fucking lullaby to go to sleep, some of you people do <laughs> – that's cool. I don't give a shit. Bottom line is, is you have to do the work. What is that work? What I'm going to put you through this year. And you'll see it's fun. It's actually fun. In the beginning, it'll feel like, what, what am I doing here? 
a couple of weeks of it, you'll say, oh, shit, this, I'm starting to see it now. And those observations, the things that you see that I don't talk about, that is where you start mining. Meaning that's the direction that your personal personality, your unique perspective on price, that is starting to be activated. You're starting to see things in price and you need to pay attention to it. It doesn't mean go on Twitter and say, ICT, I found this right here. And what do you think? It doesn't fucking matter what I think. If it's resonating with you, it's your business. Mind your fucking business. I'm not trying to mind your business. I got my own fucking shit to worry about. But the things that start making sense to you in the live streams, that's the beginning foundation to what you're going to be focusing on as a trader. You're not going to see why I'm calling a specific level important. Why are you picking that candle? But then when I talk about a fair value, you got to go, oh, yeah, it makes sense to me. So what does that mean? You're not an order block trader. It doesn't mean I don't understand order blocks. Fuck fair value gas. I can see that easily. I'm going to conquer order blocks because something's there and I don't understand it. I'm going to waste my fucking time doing something harder than I could just simply follow what I see easily. The fair value gap. And either one of these things could be interchanged with whatever PD array. That's the part that most of you don't realize. You only need one. You could completely carve out your entire career with one model, one entry technique, your multiplier. That multiplier is the pattern that you key up on every single time you go into the marketplace. If there's not a breaker, you're not trading it. If there isn't a fair value gap, you're not trading it. They don't give a fuck if it keeps running up 100 handles. Who gives a shit? That wasn't your trade. Maturity is, I don't need that trade because I know all these other instances where my model is going to speak and I'll be able to activate a trade right there. And I won't worry about anything else except for the trade I'm in. I'm managing myself and I'm managing the trade I'm in. Fuck everything else. I don't give a shit what Bitcoin's doing. I don't give a shit what fucking FTX drama is going on. I don't worry about who's in office in the United States, who's fucking getting replaced in another country. I don't give a shit about none of that stuff. I'm in a trade. I'm watching that fucking market. I'm only giving a shit about that market. That's it. My focus is dialed in. I don't give a shit about what these other influencers are talking about on their live streams. I don't give a fuck about what they're trading. I don't give a fuck why they think this market's better than that market. Why aren't you trading the ES over the NQ? Why are you trading NQ, not the ES? Why aren't you trading Dow? I don't like fucking Dow. Dow is a piece of shit to me. Okay, It's too spotty. I have lots of students that make money with it. I personally don't fucking like it. Now, I use it for macro analysis when I'm looking for it to confirm the averages, basically Dow theory. Market breadth is strong if they're all in agreement. That means if they're all moving in the same direction, then that's a healthy market, and it's more likely to sustain its move if it's on a higher time frame. But I don't trade Dow. I'll trade NQ, NASDAQ, or I'll trade ES predominantly. ES, in, in my opinion, okay, if you had to say, Michael, you cannot trade any other market the rest of your life, what's, what's the market? The S&P. Any market but the S&P, ICT, bonds. The 30-year treasury bond. What's the other market? Oh, then it would be NASDAQ. Okay, apart from those three, if you had to pick one market, what would you trade? Ugh, nothing right now. Now, does that give you the order of importance now? <laughs> I, I constantly see these same questions coming up. Did you, did you ever think about the, what I just said is what I said. That's it. After 30 years of doing it, that's, that's it. The only reason why I stopped trading Forex is because I believe that we're about to see something pretty devastating in terms of currencies. I don't want to be caught offside when that happens. Also, the currency markets are rather sloppy. It took basically an entire month for dollar to get down to our target that I mentioned in the first week of January. Go back and watch that video. Dollar went down to that fair value gap right in the middle of it. For those who don't understand what I'm referring to, you'll see it in the analysis on Sunday. It went right down to consequent encroachment of the fair value gap on a daily chart. And look at the reaction we had the last two days. Boom! Pound only went to one target, and euro went to all of them. Now, how many times did I call the S&P and NASDAQ, and how many times did it deliver? See the difference there? 
but Michael, why aren't you trading Forex? Uh, picture's worth a thousand words. If I'm not where the market's really going to be moving, I'm going to go to where it's moving easiest. I want the real clean price runs. And that's been going on in index futures. Should Forex start getting wild again, start really opening up, then I'll be more active in Forex. But right now, it's not worth my time. I'm not suggesting that you stop trading. If that's what you do, don't let me, I'm not trying to influence you, but you're asking me. So I'm telling you, I read a tweet, the other, I guess it was this morning. Guy says, I see it's time for me to go. You know, you know, you're talking about futures. I'm only in Forex. I've learned how to trade. Thank you. I'm out of here. Okay, wonderful. That's exactly what I'm looking. I want independence. I'm not heartbroken over that. All right, I'm done, ICT. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm making money. Appreciate you. See you. I'm not going to be... <laughs> You're leaving me. I want you to fucking leave me, okay? I want you to leave me happy, satisfied, profitable, knowing what the fuck you're doing. No regrets. That's exactly what a mentor should want. That's what you should want from your mentor. Not keep paying me. I love you. Keep paying me. Fuck out of here, man. You will get what you put into this this year. That's what you're going to get. If you half-ass it, that's the result you're going to get. If you pour yourself into it and really be diligent about what you're doing, studying and focusing and being organized with your journaling, I'm telling you, it's going to totally transform every aspect of your analysis, your thought processes as a trader, and your executions will be much cleaner. You'll be more refined. You won't make a rush judgment. Your executions will be much fewer, but more of a quality entry versus, I'm afraid I'm going to miss it. Let me just jump in here now in case it runs away without me. Or it went down to where you should have went, but then I want to see if it really, re really reacts there the way I'm expecting price. And then it does, and you chase a little bit. That stuff will be refined, and you'll see less of that. Only if you put the work into it and be okay with the outcome. This is where you want to mess up. This is where you want to find out you did it wrong. You don't want to do that with your live account, trading with a funded account or your own money. You don't want to discover that you don't know how to manage yourself or your emotions or the psychological weight of being in risk. You don't want to learn that while you're out there in it. You want to master that progressively so that way you're not influenced. Once you've done months of back testing and tape reading, and you've done months of demoing, wait a minute, I, only, I need to make money right now. You're going to fucking fail, okay? You want the honesty? You want the truth? You're going to fail. I'm not here to see you fail. I don't want any of you to fucking fail. I want you to get out there and fucking kill it. Replace your fucking job. Double that income. I want you to have all that and more. But I'm a practical realist. I know that that doesn't work like that. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of unlearning. And you all have things that I'm not aware of, which are character flaws. I don't know what your character flaw is. I don't know if you're impatient, impulsive, reckless, doubtful, stubborn, not willing to take a loss. That's a hard one for everybody. Can you be wrong and not lose your fucking mind about it all and think, oh, I've got to get it all back right now? I'm going to put you in a demo trade this year. I'm going to tell you to put this trade on. When I tell you to do that, do not do that with a live account because I'm going to put you in a losing trade. And I'm going to close the stream at the end of it. And tell you, don't try to get it back until the next live stream. And I want you to think about what that feels like. And if it was real money, how hard that would be, how fucking devastating and irritating and just, ugh, it's like a mosquito bite. You know it's there. You know damn well you shouldn't scratch it. Because if you scratch it, this makes it worse. 
And that's exactly what you experience when you have a losing trade with live funds and you did not learn how to trade. You're going to go back to scratching it. And the only thing it does, it makes it bigger and it's just worse. That's what drawdown does. And then drawdown becomes what? A blown account, a lost funded account, regret, misery. All of that stuff's avoidable. You don't see it like that now because you haven't endured it yet. But some of you think that you, you know, you're never going to have that problem or you'll be fine if it happens. No, you won't. You won't be fine. You'll be marred and scarred. And now you're damaged goods because now you have to trade with that the rest of your life. I'm going to tell you something. This is why I like listening to people that actually trade with real money and have been doing it longer than a couple of years or in recent in you know, a couple months, most people on YouTube are just now getting into a funded account. They never had their own real account, but they're all authorities now. I love listening to people that have been doing it is at least half as long as I have and longer. And I love listening to their wisdom of what they had to conquer in themselves. I don't give a shit about how they trade because I'm not interested in that. I don't think there's anything better for me to do except for what I've done. Now, I, I would say that regardless of how I trade. So what happens is, is my students hear that, and they think, yeah, I'm going to go over here and tell this guy who's trading Elliott Wave, you're a fucking clown. You're not trading order blocks of fair value gas, bitch. You're nobody. You're street money. I don't tell you to do that. I don't want you to do that. That's stupid, okay? But I would have this mindset regardless if I was trading moving average crossovers and if I was com you know, consistently profitable. That, that's just me. That's my confidence. That's, that's, the, that's a strength in me. But it was a character flaw when I was 20 because I was parading around like a fucking peacock on America Online with banter that said I was smarter than I really was. And I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And the market showed me I didn't know what I was doing. And that was very painful. You don't want to have that experience because as, as a man, there was years ago I would have never admitted that. You know, in my early 30s, it was just, just coming to the point where I was like, you know what? <sighs> yeah, that was embarrassing. I shouldn't have done that. But now I realize there's benefit in telling you as a student, you don't want to have that experience. It's shameful, number one. It's something that is, in, in my opinion, it's repulsive behavior because nobody really wants to see somebody you know, gloating like, look at me. I, I sometimes facetiously play around with it on Twitter, okay? But when you listen to me and I'm talking to you and I'm, I'm teaching you, you can hear the reality, okay? I mean, yes, I think I'm better than the average bear, but I'm not bragging, okay? And I don't, I don't want any of you to, to adopt that mindset either. But when you have character flaws, and I'm going to say this part and we're going to close it because I'm, I'm hungry. When you have character flaws, it's easy to, number one, observe them when you get in, in this industry. All of those character flaws are going to shape you as the trader. For instance, when I first started, 1992, I was scared to death of putting on that first trade. I was so scared. I, I, wanted, I wanted to get in there, and a couple things moved without me. Soybean meal. I was looking at that market, and it moved, and I was afraid to do anything. I just let it go. I looked at Coco. These are all commodity markets because that's how I started as a commodity trader. And Coco moved, and I was like, damn, if, if I would have done that, I would have made 500 bucks. And I was like, okay, um, shit. And how the fuck did I get into orange juice? Think about it. I was afraid to enter. So my weakness, my character flaw was what? Doubt. In myself, which was realistic because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So my subconscious was saying, bitch, you need to sit down. You don't know what the hell you're doing. But the gambler in me who was in control said, I got to do something because I just let two winning trades go and I didn't do shit. Well, three strikes, you're out, right? So I looked at orange juice. And I said, oh, it's going to move. I'm afraid to get an orange juice. Because what happens if it has a limit move? It's really thin. That should have been the reason why I shouldn't be trading it. But I was saying, oh, well, you know, uh, I want to get in there. I've never done. I've never traded options before. Never had any idea what the fuck I was doing options. No idea. 
I said, well, you know, I think it's going to move. Let me buy some protection. I'll pay $1,500 for my option. That was the premium I paid. Plus, plus the $100 fucking dollar commission that Fox Investments trade cost me. That's what it cost me for one contract. $100 fucking dollars. That's an IQ test in itself. <laughs> but I plunked my money down. I missed the soybean meal trade. I, I missed the cocoa trade. I ain't missing orange juice. I'm in there. But just in case I'm wrong, let me do it with an option. I paid the $1,500 premium. The very next day, orange juice opens up. My option premium is now $750. No, that doesn't mean I made $750 for those that don't know what I'm talking about. It means that I paid $1,500 for something now that is worth $750. It took one fucking sleep, one night of sleep, to lose half of what the premium was I paid. What the fuck just happened? Here's what happened. I started trading with real money before I knew how to trade. And then I traded impulsively because I was fearful I was going to miss the next trade that was the third one in the line of two previous winning ideas that I didn't execute on. And I made a stupid choice of listening to some fucking clown on another message board said, you don't want to trade with futures because the underlying risk is unlimited. But with options, you can only lose what you paid. Oh, what do you fucking do? Here you go. <laughs> Here's a perfect fucking poster child of a fucking loser trade right here. Boom. Everything wrong. Impulsiveness. Trying to get in. I have to prove that I'm trading with a live account. I got to get in there. I want to see results. And I did everything I shouldn't have done. I knew nothing about options. The fucking option was overpriced. The volatility built up into it. It was too much. The premiums were expensive. And the option writer made 50% overnight. And I lost half my money. And in that one transaction, it took me 20 minutes to immediately get on the fucking phone and say, listen, Sell it at market. Send me the rest in a, in a check. One trade. And immediately I shut that bitch down. It scared the hell out of me. And I'm going to tell you something. For some of you students that have been around for a while, you heard this fucking story more times than you want to hear it. But I'm going to tell you something else. There's people that need to fucking hear it. You've learned the lesson. But new people are coming to me all the time. And they... They see what I'm able to do. They see me executing. They see me calling the market live now. And they're thinking I'm a fucking superhero. Like this guy can't do anything fucking wrong. 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 I am a human being. I am capable of doing it wrong. And when I first started, I was the perfect poster child of doing everything fucking wrong. And I'm telling you, it's so hard to overcome the damage that that shit did. Oh, it's only one transaction. No, 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 no. When you're obsessively compulsive like I am, like that's like my wife cheating on me. It's equivalent to that. It feels like, what the fuck? And you can't undo it. It's 30 fucking years ago. And I can remember what it felt like. I felt gutted. I'm like, there has to be something wrong with this fucking data. There's no way that's accurate. No, that's right. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? $750 back then, folks. Let me tell you something. I didn't even earn half that in a week. Yeah. It was bad. Like, that was like, what the hell? It took the wind out of my sails. Let me tell you something. It's stories like this where people that are traders – today that have made money and they're consistently profitable and they're worth listening to. I love listening to that because that's what shapes who they are. It's the Mickey Mouse motherfuckers that are constantly talking about how they made money. Oh, look at the withdrawal this did. Here's the fucking trade I just did. Here's the 50 R trade I did. When's the last time you fucking did something wrong? And what did you learn from it? That's what I'm interested in because anybody can get lucky. I got lucky. I got lucky for a while and made money. That doesn't mean you're skillful. 
But if you had a adverse experience in this industry and you were able to overcome that and turn it around and use it as a strength, thought I thought I forgot about what I was going with earlier, right? My weakness in the beginning was fear of getting in. My fear of trading predominantly was founded on fear of entering. I was afraid I was going to do that part wrong. So most of my work in my whole trading career was looking for an arsenal of ways to get in. Why did I need so many entry techniques? Because I was afraid of missing the move. I'm not missing shit. I got a fucking 12 gauge in my hand. Every time the market opens up, I got dozen ways to get in that motherfucking move and not chase. That's what I show you all the time when I'm doing pyramid entries. I, I'm showing you that every one of these can be the individual model that you employ. And not one of them is superior than the other ones. Some of you think, oh, I want to learn how to do that pyramiding. When I want you to just focus on the fact that any one of those pyramid entries, and what I mean by that is when I put a trade on and I'm adding more to it, every single time I do that, that would be the very instance if I hadn't traded it or entered, entered it earlier at all, I would use that as my primary entry. If you can't justify your pyramid entry on the basis of that, you're, get, you're gambling. You're guessing. Every one of your entries, when you're adding to a position, it should be able to stand on its own as that's the sole reason why you enter the trade. If you were never entered or built in a position prior to that entry. And when I learned how to pyramid, it was not taught to me that way. I was just taught as soon as you can afford to do so, buy it. That was Ken Roberts' approach. And I lost money trading Ken Roberts. I was never profitable doing anything with his bullshit. It was a stupid fucking in – it was an introduction to trading. That's all it was. And it introduced me to failure, toxic thinking. It produced everything I'm trying to keep you from having. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be – if I could go back in time, I'm trying to be the very person I wish I would have met because I would have listened to everything I'm telling you to do and avoid doing. I would have done that. After seeing what I'm able to show you and call beforehand, execute, prove it. If I existed as a person outside of myself in 1992, I would have threw that fucking book in the fucking trash on November 5th and immediately just poured everything into what I'm trying to give to you. And I would have looked at no one else. I'm not trying to cultivate a hive mentality where you only listen to me. I'm just saying I know what I needed and I couldn't find it in anything else or anyone else back then. And the resources that you have available, like the fact that you're listening to me right now, you're all doing something right now. You're all, maybe you're driving, maybe you're working, maybe you're working out, maybe you're getting ready to fall asleep. Maybe some of you fell asleep already. And some, some of you are sitting there diligently with a notepad writing down things and listening to this and thinking, wow, I never looked at it like that. Wow, I didn't think he had hardships before. I thought figured he knew everything and never had a problem. No, it was a lot of work. A lot of prayer got me here. But my fear of missing a move and fear of doing it wrong was my first barrier. And I plunged in with some stupid shit as my first transaction, knowing not one thing about options, nothing. I knew nothing about it. I learned a lot waking up the next day. Fuck options. <laughs> I ain't doing that. So my career began as pursuing precision entry techniques because my pursuit was I have to overcome my fear of picking the wrong entry point. And now I'm known all around the world for having all kinds of highly precise entry points and techniques to engage the marketplace. 
So I turned my weakness into my strength today. Think about that. That stuff comes from someone that went through the trenches. And I love listening to seasoned traders that share observations about their own development, the things that they endured, what they turned around on their own trading, uh, what, what benefited them, and how it was contrary to what they first got into the industry thinking this is what they should have focused on versus what they later found out was more appropriate what should have been a, a majority of their time and concern early on. And I try to do that in my teachings and in my lectures with all of you. And I know sometimes it's dry. Okay. Sometimes it's really boring. And I think the reason why you guys like these Twitter spaces, is because number one, you get to listen to ratchet ICT, the unfiltered me where you see and hear my chemical imbalances when they occur in the YouTubes, I filter that out and that's why it's boring. Like it's, it's, like, I mean, I get it. It's, it's a boring librarian kind of guy talking to you. Here, you know, when you when you hear me get passionate about it, you're like, oh shit, you know, it, it perks your ears up. It breaks up the monotony of the learning, and also introduces reality. Like there's a real person that's talking to you. You know, I I had real downside. I had real adversities. I, I lost real money. I've blown several accounts early on chasing things that I thought were the last bastion of technical analysis that, you know, I better jump on it right now or it's going to stop working. S stop thinking that way. The market's going to book the way the market's going to book. It matters not how many people are buying or selling it. It's going to do what it's going to do. And it's seeking liquidity and it's rebalancing in any inefficiency. If it's not doing that, it's going to consolidate. That's it. So when we sit down and we're looking at markets, the number one criteria is, should you be trading today? Is it likely to be ugly, consolidating and choppy? And I've done a lot of work to produce a list of days where I don't think it's good for me to do that. When's it likely to be choppy and, and consolidating and just do nothing where it could just chop you up and go you know, sideways the day before a high impact news event like non-farm payroll, a rate announcement, CPI. Oh, but ICT, I've made so much money on the day before. I don't give a fuck. I'm talking about me, my personal experience. I'm looking for a specific element in price that I like to operate in. You want to chase whatever you're chasing, you made money? Well done. Who am I to say that you didn't make money? I'm not showing up on your fucking channel. I'm not going in your comment section. Do you see me going around anybody else's channel saying, dude, you're a fucking, you're, you're a clown. You're not trading my stuff, so therefore you're an idiot. But you have people on the outside coming to my audience. I'm not in your audience. You're in my audience. And you're saying that this doesn't work, that doesn't work, and there's no proof. And everybody's making money and fucking bringing their receipts and being interviewed by these companies. It's not me doing that. They're not photoshopping. They're not photoshopping you know, uh, funded account certificates. The fucking companies themselves are interviewing them. You see their names on the leaderboards up there. They're getting paid. Okay. <laughs> so what the fuck? I think that more is made about image in this industry than practicality. And I have tried to be as practical as humanly possible and still keep people awake because you know, there's a lot of dryness to this. And in the beginning, I, it was all dry when I first started. It was all books. It was all dry. There was no videos unless you purchased them. And you didn't have the access to people that, number one, if they were profitable, they ain't telling you shit. They're not telling you shit. They're not teaching you nothing. They're not teaching you their best stuff. Fuck that shit. They finally found it, right? And that's understandable. But the way they marketed everything back in the 90s and the 80s and such, you know, they made it seem like you know, they, they themselves are you know, the only thing ever, which is what everybody else says they think I'm doing. I'm not saying I'm the only one that can be profitable, that, that my students are the only ones that are profitable. I'm the only one that gets the heart of why price books. 
but you can be profitable with flipping a quarter. I'm not arguing that. I just wrestle with these opinions that are strong armed against me and my community where they say, oh, there is no word that's not going to be mentioned. And we're not going to have, you know, consistency and precision when we can. Like these people out there in this industry are like at some point it, it it's it makes you wonder like are, are they really this opinionated or are they being encouraged to just put in put out there misinformation because anybody that sits on the fence and just takes somebody else's opinion whether it be about me and what I teach and my students or anything and they let anybody else frame their opinion for them or provide their mindset about a thing, whether it be trading or anything, to me is, is unfortunate because it, and it's, it provides you know, the clearest indication that you're not really equipped to be a trader because really what you're doing is, is you're looking for somebody else to give you your thought process. And how anybody would do that and be able to live with themselves is beyond me. Like I, I'm, I am a result of hard work, yes, but I'm also a result of a lot of prayer and belief and blessing. All the work in the world didn't get me here. All the effort in the world didn't get me here. Believing in other people's thoughts and the internalization of price and how the markets book did not get me here. Being contrarian to everything out there did. I opened this discussion up today with everybody in this retail part of the world, okay, in trading. They all learn the same stuff. Diagonal trend line support and resistance. Moving average crossovers, oscillators. Patterns for pattern's sake. And 2% risk. Where's all the yachts? Where's all the mansions? Where's all the evidence that they can do it precisely beforehand? It's incredible how that doesn't exist. But they write books, they make courses, and they sell themselves on social media as the ones that are capable of doing that. I come to you with a demo. I stand out here in front of the entire world. Some ridicule me. Some people don't give a shit. That's the right mindset. I prove to you where price is going to go. Conceptually, with a theory that repeats, on a narrative that is understood, I'm highly focused. It's transferable knowledge. It has nothing to do with image. I don't present my image in my personal life. I've done it one time to answer bullshitters. And the promise that that bullshitter made didn't get answered the way they said. If you prove that you have these cars, I did, and it's just it's never going to be enough. So what I live in, what I drive, how I spend my money, what I wear, how I cut my hair, it's irrelevant. Are you going to be able to make your rent payment this November? Pay your utility bill by knowing how many Corvettes I own, how big my square footage of my house is, how many garages do I have, what do I feed my dogs, what's my favorite shoe. <laughs> I like when you guys ask me what fragrance I wear because I'm a frag head, but I don't think that uh, all the things that people say about me or concern themselves about with me is even worth mentioning. I'm just the guy that I want to help you. And if you test the things I'm telling you to test, the evidence will be there for you to decide whether or not you want to pursue it. It costs you nothing. You'll know, spend a month, one month, you'll know right away if it's full of shit or not. If there's some logic to it, you'll see it right away. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. No one can tell you you didn't see what you watched me do publicly now. But years later from now, there will be people that creep up and try to discredit everything that you witnessed. It's, we did, we've been seeing it for a year and a half. 
It's been like that. It was the same way when I was on America Online. The same thing still goes on today. They will lie and say, you didn't see what you fucking saw. You didn't understand what was about to happen in the marketplace when it was explained to you beforehand. Who's really nuts here? Who's really fucking stupid? The people that lets other people frame their narrative and their viewpoint and their opinion about something. Because if you are allowing anyone to tell you what you should or shouldn't do as a trader or who to learn from, and you have never put the time and effort into the scene, whether there is any validity, you're an asshole. You're, you're an idiot and you have no business being a trader because you're not independently thinking for yourself, number one. You're allowing other people to influence you. When as a trader, I don't give a fuck who is, who's doing what. I could be in the marketplace buying and selling whatever I'm doing. And somebody that has a bigger following than me maybe has a better command of an audience segment of this industry. And maybe a bit, they may be opposed diametrically to the idea I have in my trade. I am not looking at my trade saying, uh-oh, let me get out of this. Nope. Nope. Because I know what I'm looking for. Nothing changes my opinion about the market or the trade I'm in except for the price itself. I'm not influenced in my thought process about the marketplace. I'm not swayed in my opinion about the things that I use and implement in trading. I'm not changing and tinkering anything. I'm not changing any settings. I'm not adding to, I'm not reducing. It's always the same thing. It's the same stuff every single day. Why? Because the market's doing the same shit every day. Time and price. How does the market know what pattern to use today? What harmonic pattern to use today? What school of thought? Is it Elliott Wave today? Is it Wyckoff? Is it supply and demand? Is it Dow theory? Is it volume profile? VSA? Think, folks. Think. Every school of thought, every single one of them out there, they will never agree on everything at the same time. But you know what agrees? Time of price. The open high, low, and close doesn't lie. It can't hide, and it ain't going to fucking change. Okay? So there's no reason for you to be worrying about how much I teach you this and how many more people come into the fucking party. It will not change shit. It just makes it better because there's more volume. There's more participation. That means what? Liquidity. More people in there doing it. It's going to be more. It's going to be more of a fun engagement. It's not that. All right, everybody's doing the same thing, so therefore, you know, it's going to stop. Think about the logic in that. How many books have been written about supply and demand? How about volume profile? Why aren't the guys that do volume profile worrying about? You know, oh shit, there's more people learning the volume profile. We better not. We better not teach that shit. It's all over YouTube too. It doesn't have my logo plastered on it, but the point is, is it's the same argument. You're worrying about things that are not something that you should be worrying about. Here's what's never going to stop happening, okay? The market's going to open at a predetermined time. They're going to close at a predetermined time. That's a constant. It's not going to fucking change. There's a holiday schedule that we follow. Sometimes we'll have a shortened trading session. Or sometimes we'll have a completely closed trading session. That's time. That's not going to fucking change. That's a constant. The open, the high, the low, and the close, those three price points, they're never going to fucking change. There's a beginning point, there's the highest and the lowest, and when it closes, time and price. What it does and what liquidity it seeks and what inefficiency remains in the price, that, that is the variable. But those variables repeat over and over again in a format that is easily understood and identifiable. Last statement, and we're done. 
this Tuesday, I want you to think about what I'm walking you through. For the folks that are here who are dabble in my videos and think, wow, this is a lot of shit here. You know, how do I get through all this? Cut, you know, how do I cut down to the meat? Get through all the fat, all the bullshit talking. What's something I can go out there and start working with? Here's what you're going to see, okay? We're going to look at Tuesday. Now, I don't know what Tuesday price action is going to be. Like, I don't genuinely know. I don't know if it's going to be a shit day. I don't know if it's going to be a trending day. I don't know. I don't know. It's just going to be the day that I first sit down, and, and there it is. So if you've been a student of mine, you know that it's the first Tuesday of February. That's the general rule. That's when I resume live trading. Okay, Anything in January, I usually don't even watch the charts, but because I want to be doing it live in front of you. I don't want to be rusty. I want to be close to the marketplace, and my finger's been on the pulse. But we sit down in front of these charts. I sit down in front of these charts. As a technician, I'm looking for the answer to one question first. Are we in a condition that is favorable for high probability trading? How do I arrive at the answer to that? I look at the economic calendar. What's the economic calendar for today? Is it loaded with high impact or medium impact news events? Or is it lacking any of that, but has those very things the next day? So in terms of day of week, we're going to be live streaming on Tuesday. So the economic calendar, I have not looked at. Hand to God, I've not looked at that economic calendar. I don't know if there is or isn't. I don't know. I'm going to do everything right for the first time on the live stream. I'm going to pull up the websites. I'm going to show you exactly what I walk through, exactly what I'm doing every fucking time I sit down in front of my charts. It's hard that you don't see all that stuff that's not in the videos. Okay, I'm going to do that very thing. That way you know, oh, okay, well, that makes sense now. It's not a lot. It's not acrobatics. Okay, it isn't requiring you to do all kinds of contortions and you know, meditations. It's simple, straightforward shit. But if there is a lack of news drivers today, but there's going to be a big news event tomorrow, we could potentially be in a listless trading condition. That means it's not a lot of animation, not a movement. So you have to be a real small, short-term scalper working on a one- and five-minute chart and be content with that. Or do nothing and wait for it to the next day where that has a high-impact news driver. So there's your answer to the equation of is it going to be a favorable position or a day for trading with high probability? High probability of what? Seeing a nice sustained price run where it has multiple points of entry and allows at least two exits for partials before it reaches terminus. Oh, shit. That's pretty practical. That's some real bones right there. I can work with that ICT. Right. But you're not going to get that in the first hour of the fucking sessions, are you? <laughs> you got you to gotta walk this mile with me, baby, okay? You brought road snacks, but some of you tapped out already. You didn't get that nugget. And then besides that, the next question is, okay, if it's going to be a favorable day, worth trading, not chopped up and chewed up into pieces, you want something that's clean, that has an opportunity to run, not have a strong probability of retracing against you and hit a stop loss that you want to use, hopefully. Are you bullish or are you bearish? How do we know that? We're using on the weekly chart. What's the weekly chart likely to do? Expand higher, expand lower. That's your premise going in. Premise is not narrative and it's not bias. It's just where we start from. And then we look at the the lay of the land. What's the chart showing us? What did it do overnight in London? What did it do the last two days? Because we're on day three right now. The last three days, previous highs and lows. That's where your word that won't be named is going to reach for, for liquidity. Already, in a few couple sentences, you're already seeing, wow, I can see... I can see a routine in this. Yep, it's the same routine every day. But you'll hear people say it's complicated. I overcom I'm not overcomplicating shit. I'm giving you a PhD level education. And you can streamline this down into 
the leanest, meanest motherfucking model you can ever come up with, with very few moving parts. But binary, if then, syntax. You got to know what you're looking for. If it just if it does this, then you do that. If it does this, but not that, you do nothing. I'm walking you through that real time with a chart. There'll be a session portion that you know, before the markets open up. We're doing this. So that way we have an idea and expectation of what we're looking for. And if this does not pan out, what would constitute a reversal? Not every situation brings that. But I'm going to frame out what would, what would cause that. It's not plan A, plan B, and that whatever one pans out, I'm right. The daft will think that, but the folks that are really learning, they'll see, oh, these are conditions. These are things that would support the idea of the trade, but it would no longer support the trade if it does this. What is that? You'll see it in the chart. I'm going to explain it to you because it's a, it's a varying um, situation, you know, trade by trade. But the rules are pretty much the same way. But you, you have to see it a few times to understand what I mean by that. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm not adding new content. I'm showing you exactly what it is that you should be focusing on. And by doing that day by day, even when I'm not doing a live session, you should do this for yourself. Do the same things that I walk through. And don't be afraid if the outcome for what you're studying doesn't pan out the way you expect it to. There are opportunities for you to learn when it does that. And you don't want to learn the lesson with a live account that you didn't know what you were doing when you were just hoping it was going to make you money before you knew how to trade. And then once we identify if we're bullish or bearish, we're going to work out a narrative. What should happen? What should price try to do? If it's bullish, what should it try to do? What level of manipulation? What liquidity should it reach for? What shouldn't it reach for? And how should we expect the price to deliver? And then when the market starts booking price, you'll hear me call every candle. This is what we want to see. We don't want to see this. This is what we should see. There's nobody doing that. Everybody out there pretending they figured out my enigma, you'll never see them call every single one-minute candle and outline exactly what it's supposed to do. But I'm going to do it all year fucking long. Week after week, you're going to see it. Okay, so if you want to see somebody pour everything into you, I'm doing it. I'm daddy. All you have to do is show up, take notes, and I promise, I promise you, the end of this year will be worth celebrating. You will be in a location mindset-wise experience-wise and skill set-wise that you can't fully appreciate yet. But once you arrive there, you're going to remember this conversation, sitting here listening to this, you're going to know exactly what I meant then. Not now. You're excited for it now. But when you're there, no one's going to be able to take it from you. No one's going to cause you to doubt it. No one's going to make you feel like you wasted your time. You will have arrived. You'll know exactly what you're doing, when you're supposed to do it, why you're doing it, and when not to do something. You will not feel like you have to second guess what you're doing. You won't be influenced by anybody else. You probably won't even be on social media anymore afterwards, and that's a good thing. Your circle of influence will be the person in the mirror, as it should be as a trader. And I'm excited. I'm so fucking excited to see what all of you do with it. And I'm hoping that you're, you're forthcoming with it. Don't be greedy with it and, and try to hide it and pretend and go around pretending you figured something out on your own and bullshit. Because there's a lot of you now that know my content, you're familiar with it, and you can see when people are calling bullshit, renaming it and doing other kind of dumb shit with it. You'll be ridiculed by that. You'll get more respect if you're just honest and say, you know what? I went through the task of going through it, like you said, and I'm, I'm, I'm my own trader now, and I'm using his, you know, these concepts. That's awesome. I got all the respect for that. If you do well, I'll bump you. I got no problem. I, I'm not hiding people. I'm trying to promote you. There's, no, there's, there's nothing in me 
that's trying to slow you down. I guarantee you there ain't one motherfucker out there that's teaching paid or for free that's pouring more into anybody than I am. Because I know where I'm taking you. I know the outcome of this. Not for all of you, but for the ones that put the work in, I already fucking know. And I can't wait. I can't wait for you to understand exactly what I mean by that. Because once you feel it and you experience it, that's empowerment. That is confidence. That's not arrogance. That's not pride. That's confidence. The thing that you're lacking right now. You think you're confident your job needs you right now. It doesn't need you. You need it. You lie to yourself. You lie and say, that company needs me. Nope, it doesn't. And there's going to be a whole lot of people this year getting laid off, made redundant, and it's going to get worse into 2024. And what you're learning is a hedge against that. You may not be laid off. You may not be sacked. But you might not get a raise. And that would be impactful to you, wouldn't it? This gives you the ability to give yourself a fucking raise whenever the fuck you want. You want a new car? How much does it cost? Okay, let's figure this out. I need this many pips, this many points. Over the next four months, I can pay that bitch off in cash. Done. And not even drain anything and put yourself behind the eight ball with all the other rules and, and goals that you have for yourself in your trading. Imagine, imagine this, okay? And I promise this is it because I'm really I'm starving now. <sighs> ICT. You keep saying you're going to stop. You keep going. I over-deliver, motherfucker, and don't you complain about it, okay? Don't you complain to me about getting more than what you paid for, okay? Nobody fucking does that. Sit down. <laughs> imagine the power I'm saying, you know what? And this is not repping any specific funded account or company. And I think if there's anything that should be looked upon as maybe not lasting forever, it's that. I don't think the funded account type thing is going to be a thing for long term. I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But it's unregulated in a lot of ways. And I think that that will eventually be affected. But that need not be a concern, okay? I'll talk about this year how you can find ways to get money with the skill set that you'll learn. Because believe me, there's, there's lots of ways to do that. You don't need funded accounts to do it. But let's just say, for instance, you, once you get to the point at the end of this year, you know what you're doing. How many of you own your own home? How many of you rent? How many of you have a home with no mortgage? How many of you want a home with no mortgage? How many of you want a home with no mortgage and a new car with no car note? Now imagine at the end of this year, you have this skill set. You know, you know how you can go in and get 25 handles per week out of the S&P. Multiple ways to do it, but you know with confidence, you know 25 handles is easy. You look around and you see a house you like. Okay? It may not be $2 million, 9,000 square feet, but it may be something that you would love to live in. You think to yourself, wow, you know what? I'm going to work diligently to try to get the closing costs, the down payment, so that way I don't have to have a PMI, which is like the secondary mortgage that a home buyer has to pay if they don't pay at least 80% of the note on that mortgage when they first buy it at closing. Get those closing costs associated with buying it covered okay, for that particular house. And you secure your selection on a new vehicle, not a Lambert fucking Guinea because they're garbage, okay, but a new ride. Something that it's reliable, something that you like, and it's economical. 
the best thing you as a trader can do is number one, give yourself a, a nice living place and a reliable form of transportation. If you can secure that and it costs you nothing out of pocket except for the upkeep on it, you are actually in the highest bracket in the United States because most people don't own their home and most people don't own their cars. They're paying a note of some kind. Imagine the power and confidence in knowing that, okay, I'm going to purchase this house with somebody else's money. Because that's what you're doing if you're using that funded account. Yes, you're paying your monthly expense to, to maintain it from what I gather from it. That's what I understand about them. But you secure the funding and you do the work to build the account up and you get that house settled. It's in your name, but you didn't pay it off yet. And you secure your, your car. You didn't pay it off yet but you're paying the notes on it through your trading. You have one account that meets those expectations and that's it. You're not taking your results to social media. You're not doing this crazy shit where you're trying to look better than everybody else. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just making ends meet. And that role of that one funded account is to make the minimum expectations in terms of cost between the car and the home. Then you start a secondary account that's completely outside of the workload that you placed on that one. That's all you do with that account. Once you meet it, you stop. You fucking stop. You don't push it anymore. It's only there to work for you. You make your car note, you make your house note, and you cover the cost of whatever that funded account monthly payment thing is that they require, whatever that is. And then you stop. You trade your other account. Your other account is the account that you're trying to do for growth. You use that to parlay up. Same five handles a day, 25 handles a week, and you let the heavy lifting of money management do all the work. And you work over the course of one calendar year with that. In one calendar year, you should have no problem covering the cost of that car note. Then that car note money is no longer an issue. The money that you would have been paying towards the car note, you now apply to your house note in addition to. And then now with that secondary account, you work towards building up sizable lumps that you put towards each new quarter or six months or in a year that you throw at that mortgage and you pay it off inside of three years. You own your house and your car. You use every, somebody else's money with a skill set that I'm going to give you for free this year. So in three years, did I say you're a fucking millionaire? No. Did I say that you could have your own home paid for and your fucking car paid for with this skill set and give you a, a way of doing it and a process, a procedure to do it? I think I just outlined a, a model for some of you that I think is practical. It's practical. It's not high and lofty. It's not immediate gratification. And it's obtainable. Contrast that with what you are doing right now. How is what you're doing right now, if you're not doing this, if you're not part of this, this phenomenon, this movement of ICT and the world growing in an understanding of how to tap into these marketplaces and withdraw and harvest abundance. If you're not doing that, if you're not making it taking advantage of and making it a, a goal for you to find another stream of income using a skill set that's transferable. If you're not doing that, what's changing in your life for the better? How are you going to get closer to those goals? Because if you don't own your own home and you don't own the car, free and clear, when will you and how will you?
For some of you, I think that's a realistic goal to aim for. It might take you longer than three years. But if you're working towards that goal and you're seeing progress, what's wrong with it? Nothing. It's giving you a target to aim for. But what happens if you already own a home? And what happens if you already own a car, several cars? What do you set as a goal? Whatever your heart's content is. But whatever it is, you set it to paper. Write it out. This is what I want to see happen in the next three months. This is what I want to see in the next six months. This is the next 12 months. This is the next three years. Where do you want to be? What do you want to obtain? What do you want to be able to fulfill your life? Maybe for your children. Maybe you want to help them with a home. Maybe you want to help them with their first car. Maybe it's college. Maybe you want to be able to make the, the ends meet for college tuition for your kid because maybe you make a little bit too much money like we were. We were unable to get college tuition for my daughter. Make too much money, they don't give it to you. Then you start an account. Its primary function is to meet that end. What's the chances of you gambling that and seeing how far you can run it up when you know it's associated to taking care of something like that? It's not likely, is it? At least it shouldn't be if you're responsible. You're investing in a major hurdle and barrier in financial terms. A home mortgage, a car note, college tuition. You make one account. You work for that. You wait for the best setups only. You don't just go in there and just, well, you know, this looks like it might be a good setup. Fuck that. You're going in there and you're looking for the right setups, the right days, and you're only focusing there. And you're meeting that goal for the month. You're covering all the costs associated with doing it. And then you fucking stop. You withdraw the money that's required to meet that threshold for expense, to meet that purchase or overcome it. And once it's done, you'll look back and say, you know what? I have mastered money. Money is not victimizing me. I'm not hurt by a lack of money. I will never worry about a lack of money. I have mastered money. I have mastered my finances because I don't see bills as a problem. Bills, everybody has. Everybody, whether you're rich, millionaire or not, we all have expenses. I don't worry about expenses. I don't think about, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do about this? If there's a bill that comes up, it's getting paid. If I know there's a big, large expense coming, I know how to do it. I know how I'm going to attack it. If it's a really large one for some of you when you're first starting out, you got to think about it as that elephant. How do you devour an elephant? One bite at a time. But you don't hear and you don't see books written about, this is what you're supposed to do. Go out there and you break it down modularly. They all tell you, 20R, 50R, 200R, do it all real quick and try to get it overnight. Get rich quick. Fuck that shit doesn't work. It does not work. Be practical with this this business and this industry because if you treat it with responsibility, the world's your oyster. Who says you can't make whatever the fuck you want to make? Who's stopping you from that? Because as uh, far as I can tell, the only one that's stopping you is you. On that note, thank you all for hanging out with me today. I'm going to be taking Monday off. So that was a reminder. If I'm quiet on Twitter, just know that it's not because I don't like you. <laughs> this just means I'm resting because Tuesday will be a lot of focus for me. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I've had fun talking with you. I hope you got something useful from all of this. Until next time, be safe.